actually played against Snake and Brawl. That's facts. I, I feel like, you know, you got you got Jen, who was not a Brawl kid, probably did not know the matchup. If you don't know how to fight Snake, something like that's going to happen. Speaking of a weird matchup, Yo, we let's got the, jump into Pac-Man yeah, land. We got the Xeno special right now. We got DA, Sinjay, DA, Venya. Yeah, oh, this, is DA, this is a crew battle yeah, happening right here. here. Winner semis. I mean, this is a very deep in the bracket. You know, we got 93 entrants today, sitting all the way in the top five now. Yeah. Wait, 90, 96? 96, my yeah, 96 bad. Entrance. Wow. And uh, right now, you got Jisker uh, Ninja just like running Sinji across the stage. So I know this is a matchup in Smash 4 that Sinji definitely did not like and was considering a counter pick for it. But since this is a new game, I guess, you know, he wants to try it again. But it still seems on paper that it would still be pretty bad. Yeah, I was talking to Sinji. He says that like Pac-Man feels way nicer in this game than he did in the previous one. And he's definitely pulling out some new tricks. I know he, be he ended up beating Frozen, one of the fan favorites, to win this tournament. That was... So okay, so I know what so I know what he was trying to do because uh, the, one of the new mechanics of trampoline is that if you hit it, it loses a it loses a level. Mm -hmm. But it looked like he double hit the trampoline. Yeah, that and, was. Uh, and that's why Venia looked confused. He just like he just wanted to bounce off, off of it and try to. And get then he just fell to his death. But regardless, he's gonna set up a nice kill setup out for that down tilt. Yeah, down tilt in this game is nice for Greninja. Yeah, it sets fun. up into anything. Well, yeah, I mean it was kind of just like a Smash where you had like down tilt into mm. up smash. You know. He's got that new animation though. He does like a little chop. He tries to break their ankles. Oh, yeah, he has the water shuriken. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and that was a kill setup that I know I, I saw Cindy laughing. Mm. Um, yeah, that's, man. Literally, that's all Cindy does, dude. He just puts on his glasses, his little lab coat, tries to see how can I, how creative can I make these kills with Pac-Man? Yeah, man. And he tacked on a quick 96%, and that's straight into his stock, man. Yeah, I mean um, that was a point blank bell. That's gonna stun Greninja hardcore, leading into a free forward smash. Yeah, and you know, since, since he's using the stage setup, you know, to his advantage, he's pretty much just moving from side to side and is going to each platform, making Venny approach. So that that thing just stayed out for a while. That was, that was a little shocking. Yeah, it hit it hit the substitute and it hit um one of the fruit, I believe. So. And speaking of improvements from the previous game, uh, Venny was also talking about how Greninja feels way nicer as well. Yeah, I mean, uh, all the characters in this game had their movement buff. Mm -hmm. uh, had their everybody has a three frame jump spot now, so it's universal. So everybody will universally feel somewhat somewhat faster. Yeah. Ooh, he actually shield poked him with that down tilt. Trying to push him off to the other side of the stage. The thing is, he is down on his last stock, high percent. Sinji's trying to get crafty with his kill. Yeah, man, and this stage, stage setup is really benefiting Sinji. Like, you just see Venya just trying to hit Sinji off of these platforms, and every time he tries to retaliate, Sinji just has another answer for him. They're trying to figure out when he's going to throw out the shuriken. Okay, well, just trying to do a cheeky setup right there. Yeah, he actually was using the Hydra as just like a little bit of a boost to push his dash attack a little bit further. Avoid that bell. It was a trap. He jumped out of there immediately. He knew he was going to get set up with that dash attack. And one of the new things about Pac-Man is uh, when Pac-Man uh, picks the fruit back up, he can actually reshuffle his fruit again. Oh, good tech from Venya. He could have got wall spiked right there. Venya is just the right time. But the problem is Sinji sitting at two stocks still. One stock still. Yeah, and that, and that Shadow Sneak just obliterates Sinji from the other side of the stage. Now he's sitting at 152% maximum rage. He is dead. Ooh, that Good. Look, that looked like a chill poke. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I think it did. Like, because it like the way that the arc that Pac-Man throws that bell in. It look, you know, he throws it upwards. You know, at an angle. So maybe a shield was a little bit locked. Let's just watch yeah, this. Okay. 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 Here we go. What happened? Uh, I. Mm, I'm not sure what happened there. I'm, I'm, let's watch that again. Did he drop shield did he, did too he, early? I wonder if that's what happened, because his shield definitely came out and it was full. That shield was full, dog. Wait, one more time. I need to say that one more time. <laughs> Yo. Can we do that like in slow mo? What the hell? Like, fra I need a frame by frame play of this. Pretty sure it just poked. Yeah. It, it shield poked? That shield pokes now? Everything pokes in this game, I feel. That's, wild. that's honestly true. Yeah. But yeah, it looks like it's hard to shield the bell when it's point blank because uh, Venny got caught by it twice that game. And yeah. they both led into a kill. Yeah, and usually Venny is uh, the type of player to take the items and use it to his advantage. So uh, that probably caught him off guard. He still looks kind of confused. Going into Battlefield, though. <laughs> Look at his eyebrows. He's like, what? wait, well, how did I die? Yeah. Oh, yeah, and yeah, killing that Hydrant with the Shuriken, you could do that now. Definitely going to be an, uh, a good tool in this matchup. Yeah, now uh, I think, you know, Venya could benefit from, you know, not as ding like he did in the last game. Mm. And um, maybe, like, you know, taking a little time to analyze what Sinji's doing. I mean, like, you haven't seen some of the crazy setups that Sinji's, like, used to showing. 
So maybe just like take a little bit of time, you know, see his movements just like there, like ready to jump onto the platform. Oh, he made out the grab. The grab seems a little bit safer now for Pac-Man than it did in the previous version. Oh, yeah, it's a, it's a functional grab. Uh, hey. It, it's, it's functional, uh, it's faster, so you could actually grab out a shield. Good for him. Yeah. He needed it, dude. Yeah. Like, trying to push him off, sitting out 80%. Good Ooh. setup, avoiding the uh, Gal Galaxian ship in the process. It still has down tilt up smash. Looks like we have some adaptation coming out from Venny. The triplats are helping out a bit. Yeah, it's, it's really streamlining Sinji's landing attempts. Uh, Sinji cannot camp on those side platforms like he did on Kalos. Oh, trying to splash him right there. He actually ended up using his double jumps. That's why he had to opt to go for that up B just to make sure he got the stage safe and sound while also tapping on damage against Sinji's Pac-Man sitting at 134. Yeah. Oh, got caught by the neutral air. Yeah, this is this is, this is the crucial point for uh, Venny right now. If he, he, I feel like he really needs to take the stock. Oh, he caught the bell. He could actually play around with this. Yeah, ooh. And that bell actually hit the trampoline and uh, pressured Sinji at no. the same time. He got rid wait, of the power wait, bell. Wait, the, I, <laughs> wait, excuse me. That's a thing you can do? I, I, I did not know that was a thing. Wow. Okay. Um, that's going in the archives, right? Definitely? That was definitely not. <laughs> that was not a Smash 4 thing. I'll tell you that. Like, wow. Okay. You know, nice air dodge. Oh, forward yeah, and, throw. And forward throw, a buff move by Greninja, because in previous games, that definitely would not get nowhere close to killing there we go. We got Venia with a slight lead here. Let's see if he can hold on to the stock for as long as possible. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, nice forward area. Uh, and, you know, Venia's really dealing with um, Yasinji a lot better. And I think it has a lot to do with the stage. It has to do with the stage. Has to, I think there's adaptation happening as well. You see him, he feels a lot more confident with taking down the Hydrant every single time. He knows what moves to go for. Got caught by the Apple, which is a potential kill move. Nice call out from Sinji, yeah. recognizing he's going to fall right in front of him with that forward air. Yeah, and, uh, you know, the Pac the Pac Man's force smash, you know, still big hitbox. So coming down with that was kind of unsafe. So yeah, caught by the key. Yeah, nice retaliation from Sinji. Ooh, yeah, that that grab is you know so much safer to throw out there. Trying to space it, that shield looking super small. Yeah, Sinji does not have that get off me option like he did in previous games. He cannot up be out of shield anymore. Trying nice. to set him up with dash attack. Yeah, and a nice frame trap by uh, Venya. See him poking his shield again. And I just think uh, at, in this game, uh, Venya's doing a lot. You know, he's doing a lot better keeping corner corner pressure on Sinji. Oh, he was following him with that water shuriken. Uh, again, Hydro yes. Pump caught him before he could re-grab onto that ledge. I think Venya's starting to realize that Hydro Pump's a really good tool against uh, Pac-Man's up B, the power pellet. Yeah, and... Um, the you know, thing about that is uh, Sinji actually air dodged to ledge a couple of times, and it looked like uh, Venny had caught onto that. But. Dog, I don't even know where Venny is going. Trying to go down there with the neutral air, gets caught by the pack jump. Yeah, and destroying that, and just destroying that trampoline. The water shurikens are really fast in this game. See him coming out super quick. Try to get the follow up okay, afterwards. Follow Good DI from Sinji, trying to avoid that by holding down on the control stick. Yeah, and just going straight to the platform to avoid any uh, constant pressure that Venny had from him landing. Got gets caught by the back air. Here comes the strawberry. Ooh, and Sinji tried to get that booster, try to throw the strawberry a little bit faster towards the ledge, but it didn't work out for him. Good idea though. He keeps going for the counter on the hydrant. It's working out for him very well. Yeah, it seems like um he has he actually has frame advantage on that. Um, because every time Sinji threw out something, it seemed like he was kind of frozen. Oh, he tried to go for a second one? He saw him floating in that air. Back throw not enough to get that kill just yet. 153%. Look out for that bell. Yeah. Yeah, yeah good pay and good patience by Venia. You can see a lot of players in that situation just panic. You probably get hit by something on that, on that situation. Yeah, like make a bad option, maybe go for like a roll on the ledge. Yeah. Very punishable. Oh, he's trying to catch Sinji jumping out of shield. Still living, this frog. Okay, there he goes. 192, he the eventual kill. I at 192, man. Yeah. What was that, like neutral air? Okay, oh, there's a lot of cooldown afterwards. He was playing on that trampoline. Yeah. The yeah. thing is, Venny was trying to delete that trampoline, so it like remove a tool for Sinji to try to get out. It doesn't matter, takes the trade, and he is gone. Game two going to Venya. Yeah, and read that dash check. Like, you know, like I was saying earlier, it seemed like Venny could pin down Sinji more in the corner. There's not that side platform that Sinji could retreat to in the corner like he did on Kalos. And uh, Battlefield lent, lent him a little bit more, a little bit more tools to pressure them at the corner and keep him there. Now we're gonna go to a counter pick coming out from Sinji. Now, for those that don't know how this, this, the stage counter pick works, is uh, Venia 
gets to ban two stages of the ten legal stages today. Yeah, we don't know if the stages is permanent or not, guys. We're just still kind of like testing stuff. It might be different next week. Who knows? But yeah, it's two stage bans, and Sinji gets to pick any of the other eight stages. There is no DSR on yeah, in no. this tournament. Yeah, DSR is bad. DSR, yeah. DSR. New York City just does not like DSR. It's a... Uh, yeah, we're, we, we, we've seen the light. We've seen the light. The thing is, like, it's not that I have problems with DSR. I just... It's a stage ban. You got to treat it like a stage ban. So, like, if, if you're doing, like, a five-stage list, like, from like, Smash Smash 4, and you had DSR and one ban, that's too much. DSR is bad. TLDR pure, B, DSR is bad. Um, but, yeah, so we're going to go... We're going to the next, <laughs> going to the next game. Right now. Oh, yeah, next game, next game. So I'm highlighting Duck Hunt. Dude, I want to see some Duck Hunt in this game, man. No, he actually, you know, towards the end of Smash 4, he actually had a Duck Hunt. Sinji? Yeah, he, no, he really did. He wanted what? To, he actually wanted to play Duck Hunt specifically against Greninja. <laughs> Another one of those characters want to play Grin against Greninja. But we're going to Unova. So for some people who may think that this is a very similar layout to Pokemon Stadium 2, you are correct. But the dimensions are slightly different on the sides, and the platforms are a little bit smaller and pushed in more. Yeah, he also got some walls to be able to wall jump off of a lot easier. Yeah. All right, Sinji was looking for a tech roll read there, hoping Benny was going to roll left instead. He keeps going for the counter. It's working out for him. The reason counter works against the Hydrant is because there's an active hitbox constantly coming out of it, like yeah. the little water effects. So we just get a free counter every single time. Yeah. Greninja's counter is wacky. Yeah, and think about it. Sinji um, kept, he kept throwing down the, the Hydrant and then pulling fruit behind it. And Benny was catching on to that, and by the time Benny came out of um, his counter, he was getting hit by it every single time. I feel well, like he, oh, he almost died. <laughs> yeah, th thankfully that trampoline was there to save him. Because I feel like Vinny doesn't even know where he's going to appear. I know there's like eight different directions that he can like swing in, depending on what direction he's holding after the, tr the counter triggers, if it's very similar to Smash 4 anyways. Yeah. And that seems to be what the case is. Again, yeah. gets the counter again. He flies so high into the air. What is going on? Is yeah. it, I wonder if it's like the hydro... Uh, the hydro, hydro pump, pump actually, like like from the, the actual hydrant. You're carrying the momentum? Yeah. Yeah, maybe. But, um, yeah, but right now, yo, even game right now, uh, even game, and... As you say that, point Jeez. blank bell. You saw Vinny trying to pick it up earlier, but you didn't want to get too close because then he gets caught by it, obviously. Yeah, it... and, you know, as soon as Vinny recovers, he quickly just, like, tacks on damage to his shield and then takes the forward air at the ledge. Just throw it out, man. I mean, yeah, you know, you know in this game, you can really pressure shield in. He mm. exploited that beautifully. Again, going for another counter. Yeah, it def okay, so it definitely slows down time. Greninja counter definitely has like some weird yeah. slow motion effects. Saw some witch time happening. Ooh, okay. couldn't get the follow back for the down tilt. He is spamming that move. Yo, yo, Sakurai gave Greninja witch time? <laughs> Excuse me? What was he thinking? That log actually stays out way longer. Yeah. And until he goes for like another one. And it looks like he's actually completely safe afterwards too. Maybe it's just the angle. But. Yeah. Benny has definitely been labbing stuff. I feel like anytime the Hydrant's out, I, Venya is the one that has the advantage, not Sinji. Oh yeah, no, definitely. Um, Alright, okay, so even presents right now. Yeah, Quantum, Quantum with the Bell again. Yeah, the Bell is posing a real problem for Venya. He's getting hit by a lot. They're yeah, trying to jump over. The Bell is no longer in play, almost dying to the counter, seeing at 84.4%, 0.1% difference. Yeah, and, and Sinji needs to realize right now that, like, throwing out attacks behind that Hydrant, especially when Venya is right next to you, is not the ideal option, because right now, Benny was looking for a very hard punish, and that's going to come to him. And you saw Sinji trying to play around that trampoline to mix up where he was going to land, but he's left Ooh. wide open, though. Up smash not connecting for Venia. Uh, some things never change. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, honestly. All right, good retreating forward air to catch the dash attack. Venia looking for this opening. Applying pressure with the back air. Ooh, and I, like, I really like that walk away. Just trying to see what uh, Sinji does out of that yeah. corner. Trying to force a reaction out of him. Okay, trying to apply some pressure with the shurikens to force a get up because that will catch people hanging on the ledge. And, and, you, and, you, can see, and you, you can even tell that Benny is cautious of that bell. As soon as he hit Sinji's shield, he did not want to do anything <laughs> to get hit by that bell. And that is the third time Benny has been caught by it that high in the air. I mean, at least he's getting caught that high so a smash attack can't connect. Yeah. But he's still trying to like figure out like the exact position he should try to approach this at an angle, you know? So, yeah, something that um, he should be aware of, though, is that uh, Pac-Man's back air is actually buffed. He can actually kill Benny from the middle of the stage with a back air if Shinji has the proper spacing. And that grab. Dude, I've never seen Pac-Man like make that face before after whiffing a grab. He looks so sad. He's like, oh, I got a working grab and now you won't even let me connect it. Nice catch from Venia. Distracting yeah. him with the Hydrant before jumping up for the forward air. 
Dash and then, attack. Whoop. And Bene just like simply applying pressure with his with his presence. He's not doing anything crazy. And nice parry right in front of the shield. Oh, I mean, to be fair, I feel like that parry fell a little accidental because Bene didn't really try to go for anything after it. Yeah. And then ended up leading, leading to his demise. Final stocks. Winner, this is going to move on to the first winner's finals for the ultimate Zeno. Yeah, man. Gonna be a Pac-Man or a Greninja, Zeno, a Venia versus Sinji. Oh yeah, and Venia just pressuring Sinji's shield still. Now I just want to let's see what Sinji does out of the corner, because to be honest, Sinji has been doing a lot of the same options out of the corner, and I think you know Venia's caught onto that. He's standing by the hydrant, trying to pull a fruit. Oop. Let's take 30%. Yeah, that was a lot of damage. Wait, again, applying some pressure. <laughs> it's it, it really is like a weird slow motion. Though. And it's completely safe. How is that completely safe? <laughs> My man is like... It's completely he safe! He goes flying all over the place. It's like, great. He, he literally does not care. <laughs> okay, we got the uh, Galaxian ship combos coming out. Yeah, and Nair, you know, being safe on shield space. Yeah, so. but Nair is still a combo starter for Greninja. So at this point, Benny's definitely going to be looking for that neutral air to try to get the... Uh, some follow-ups afterwards to inevitably lead into a kill. But Sinji counterattacking with the back air himself. High yeah, percent. And the yeah, clock and is ticking. And Sinji needs to be careful of pulling these fruit behind these hydrants again, like I said. Ooh, and he... Did he die? Too low. Oh, good tech. That was an amazing tech. Because the thing is, there's like a little bit of a stun. So that actually requires a lot of effort. Great, great back air coming out from Venya, sending Sinji off stage. Oh, yeah. And he has, the, he has the apple. I don't know if Venya knows. He has the apple. He's, right he's got to be careful. He's going to throw in a diagonal. But now he's got the bell right back at him. This is what Sin this is what netted him so many stocks in the beginning. And he netted one last stock oh against Venya. Sinji's Pac-Man is entering winner's finals here at Xeno Ultimate. That shield poke again? How many times has that shield poke? I've never seen I've never seen that move shield poke like that. Oh no, he just ran I, into he it. He just ran into it, yeah. My, my man my man dashed in. Oh my god. Okay, I think he was trying to like grab him before like the uh, bell came out. Yeah, man. Um it just seems like the I don't want to say the properties of the move changed, mm. but it seems like... Something's different. Yeah. A matchup we haven't seen before. Inkling fighting off against Snake. John Numbers taking down Nixie in a potential upset previously. I mean, we saw that Nixie flubbed a wall jump, so John literally <laughs> went by by the skin of his teeth. Dude. Nick S. Deed and John won. What a, what a, what what a, a world we live in. Know? If we get, if we get Numbers Sinji's winner's finals, yeah. <laughs> can we please not? Um... But, uh, yeah, I mean, right now we have a... Uh, I definitely don't want John versus Sinji winning finals. Yeah. Oh, my God. For those that don't know, that was a Smash 4, like, for, like, the first year of that game's lifespan. That's all we saw in yeah, finals. Yeah, that's all we saw. But, um, yeah, right now we have, um, you know, the new John Numbers main, uh, Inkling. Yep. So, Inkling's a character that's uh, very rushdown heavy. Likes to get into the opponent's faces and just, like, push all sorts of buttons while also having a splat grenade to help out with, like, you know, just throwing it out there, having this active hitbox that the opponent has to respect. But this is going to turn into, like, a grenade versus grenade battle, honestly. Yeah, and the thing about Inkling is, like, uh, when Inkling's dashing around like that, it's actually shifting down her hurt box. So... Oh, Furry? Oh, yeah. Oh, so in this Britain. matchup, you don't want to tech against Inkling. If you tech, that's going to be a free splat. Yeah, you know, if you, if you get buried like that, you can tech out. Uh, I mean, you, you can't mash out, mm. but it's pretty hard to mash out. You have to mash pretty yeah. hard. Oh, and, caught him with the C4. And he did not see it. It was under the paint. It was under his paint. He did not see it. Dude, John Numbers covered the, the remote bomb. That's All right, cool. here we go. The thing is, he did just drop it and immediately took, took it off. Seeing at 154%, John has yet to take any damage just yet. So Snake wants to cook his grenades, right? He wants to bring them out, wait for them to, uh, before throwing them, he wants to make sure they're a little bit cooked, but does not matter, gets grounded by the splat roller. Number second away, jo uh, Sage's stock. Yeah, I mean, that's one of those moves, uh, it's kind of reminiscent of Bowser Jr. side B, um, but it actually is good. So it buries people and you can kill them at later percents. And like I said, it's very hard to match out of there. We got some whiff grabs going on. He's trying to apply some pressure with the first swing of forward tilts. Yeah, and a lot, and a lot you know, a lot of shield stone on that, so John wasn't really sure he could really punish him. So, see, so that move is, so this move is kind of funny, because the only real way to get out of that is if you A, move away, B, parry it, or C, you can roll through it, but that's kind of risky. And we got all of this ink going on Snake, and what that's going to do is just decrease Snake's defense from, uh, for Inkling to be able to attack on as much damage as possible. When you're fully inked, that is 1.8 times more damage. 
it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing, man. Yeah, and Rapid Jab's a good move to just try to add on as much as possible. And if Snake got any buffs from Brawl, it is definitely the Nikita Missile. That comes out super fast now. Oh, yeah, and it, it kills. Like, it's really yeah. strong. And oh, then, that was a great air dodge coming out from Dekil Sage. He recognized that John Numbers wanted to destroy his Cypher, managed to save his air dodge in the nick of time to be able to get out of there. So, and, and I think that's that's where um, this game will be won. If John can go out there and really like edge guard Snake pretty hard, because like even though Snake, you could air dodge and all this other stuff and get back to the ledge easier, Snake really can eat a lot of damage off stage. I think that's what you know Sage is fearing. Oh, he came on with a neutral air. Shields, shield grabbed it out of it, decided to go for the trade with the grenade. That's kind of like what snakes want to do. They have to accept that they're going to get take damage from their explosives. But in the process, they want to trade their attacks, especially if they have a stock lead. And this is funny right now, because John is just running up and shielding, anticipating that uh, the pill stage is going to throw out an up tilt. And he wants to retaliate, but... What the heck? Good tech coming out from Sage. All the explosions coming out, still living at 219%. Yes, he's a heavyweight, but he's like top 15 or something like that. So there's a C4 planted right behind. Oh, you don't go run into that. I, oh, yeah, dude, I saw I saw John. Those are, they see that C4 right in front of the to kill Sage. Jump back on that left platform. Not sure if John's aware of it. And uh, I'm not sure if up tilt is safe, but... It just seems like uh, John is having trouble punishing it. And if it is safe, then, you know, can't do anything about it. Spacing out that down tilt. You're going to see a lot more down tilts coming out from Sage with this snake. Snake's at 231% right now. I cannot Welcome believe Welcome to Brawl, like, boy. Well, the thing is, Inkling has problems killing if they can't get the roller to connect because they need, like, a smash attack. But eventually, you know, if you're at 250%, a back throw will kill. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so right now, um, the kill is going to try to get this kill, and this is an another setup you could do. Trump. Got the Trump. Yeah, and if you if you get up too early, you can get hit by that. He's gonna be able to mash out of that. Yep. Numbers messed up the cancel of the spot roller a little bit. Can we get a big punish? Try to go for the back air. Yeah, not get the punish that he wanted to. Okay, it's still not killing. I'm surprised he didn't go for the down throw and try to like you know read attack option. Mm -hmm. Oh, we got another roller. Managed to mash out just in time. Tried to go for a punish, but the forward smash had a little bit of cooldown. Okay, and he, but the thing is, he's running out of ink. This could be imperative for John to just try to chill back. Because now if Inkling doesn't have ink to play with, her attacks become pretty useless. Or don't work at all. So this is the time for John to push the aggression. There he okay. goes. Back throw. Still living. Still like, what is going on here? 228%. There yeah. we go. One more grab. Now Snake is at a dangerous percent already. Yeah, and Inkling gets that refill. And yeah, and that is not safe on chill, ladies and gentlemen. If <laughs> Inkling does that, yeah. you can shield it, and she will stop right in her tracks. Always, always shield Splat Roller, because it's a very devastating move. If he gets caught by the Splat Roller, that is the game. Yeah. So Sage has to keep that shield up. Yeah, and there's counterplay to it. Like, you can hit him. You can oh, hit he him caught out him at a super jump. All right, he's going to live off of this. Shoot, shoots him in the face. You just get some stage control. Yeah. Reloading its ink. He's sitting at 206. Oh, he gets caught by the down smash. That's going to be game number one going to John Numbers. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, just like you said, uh, the kill side is going for a lot of trades in that match. But, uh, you know, once he couldn't get that kill at that late, you know, in the second stock, mm. John kind of ran away with it. Because, uh, you know, with Inkling's movement, Snake having to catch, you know, Inkling running around the stage like that, it's kind of hard. And just, to, you know, just to say that Inkling, when Inkling runs, low profiles into the ground. <laughs> And there's a big, broly man like Snake having to catch that character. It seems kind of annoying. It can be super aggra uh, aggravating to deal with sometimes. Like I said, it also looks like his roller as well. Got a counter pick coming out, going to a Metal Gear Solid stage. Uh -huh. But in Battlefield uh -huh. 4. Shout out Moses Battlefield, you're cool. Um, oh, this is, a, this is a killer remix. I love this song. Yeah, good music, man. No, that's, that's one, one of the good things about this. Yeah, you have Battlefield versions of every single stage, and they're all, you know... From what I know, um, same in perspe uh, perspective. So. Oh, yeah. Every, every single stage has the same specs. But right now, um, you know, Sage going to the stage with platforms, because you know, the C4 explosions and the grenade explosions are pretty big. So even if you're standing under it, you're going to get hit by it. Devin turned up the game music. I love this. It's so good. Nice up tilt coming out from Sage. Catching the air dodge. Now at this point, like I said, John knows this matchup from the Brawl days, so he knows how to how to do, work with the grenades. However, he is playing a new character. This Inkling coming out. 
Yeah, and he's, and he's setting up that trap with up smash. Yeah, the reason he sets up that trap is that it allows the opponent to panic and maybe force him into a situation where Sage can re-grab him. That's where Snake's game's going to thrive, trying to get these grabs. That was a good recovery coming from John, opting to mix it up where he was going to go. And he actually went through the up, like, narrowly avoided the up smash. Yeah, and the, the kill state still um, committed to that double up smash and didn't really punish John on that landing because he was not, he had a lot of landing on that there. Down tilt? Yeah, he's at 191. He that's fair. No, that's honestly fair. 191. That's, usually, that's probably going to be his punish move of choice because it's super quick and has a lot of length. Again, see him catches him rolling. Forward smash is going to be able to lead to his kill. Yeah, man. So, you know, so even game right now. Once to get that forward tilt to apply some shield pressure. Yeah, so uh, it, it's good that John is really putting the pressure on the kill sage because if you let snake you know run away from you set up all these grenades and bombs like you're just gonna get hit and trade and not a fun sight oh yeah point blank shielding that with jab into forward tilt yeah setting up that trap again i mean john you know john rolling right through it Ooh, looks like a miss input by sage yeah anytime he goes for a four he never he very rarely wants forward smash Yeah, and, you know, and John playing that range battle with Snake because he knows when Sage is setting up the grenades like that or in the area around him, he knows that he wants to trade, he wants to attack on a whole bunch of damage. So he's using his own projectile to deal with that projectile. So good stuff by John. Okay, try and recover high to avoid. Good caught trap being set by Sage. I didn't even see it coming. He had a C4 down there. And then uh, it, it just seems like John is rolling over these C4s with the paint and then... <laughs> And they're just gone. But again, a great edge guard coming out from John immediately. He taunted. Hey, and, and you can cancel those taunts, so he got Yo, out of danger. Yo, Wumi. Yeah, you can taunt cancel this game, dog. Not Snake. Snake cannot. Any cannot. No, because any taunts that have like an attack on it can't be canceled. Uh -huh. And yet he spawns a box when he taunts. Same thing with like Luigi's down taunt. Okay. Okay, nice down tilt, trying to cover any... He's sticking Ooh. him. Nice catch. You just, okay, at that point, when you sticky someone like that, you're just trying to, like, uh, wait for them just to push any button and then just let it loose. Also, Sage is definitely playing the trade game. He doesn't matter if he gets caught by a grab or whatever. If he has a grenade spawn, he'll gladly take that trade because he has a giant lead right now. Yeah, and, you know, he's, he's the heavy character, so it's going to take a lot more for Inkling to kill him than uh, the other way around. He's got to be careful, though. That It's starting to get even. Yeah, and this is part of the matchup that Sage is definitely worrying about. Oh, Up yeah. tilt on the edge of the stage! Woohoo! <laughs> to kill Sage! Taking away game number two! Oh my god. Snake. It's, like, it's almost like we're back in 2008 again. Yeah, dude, I, this is great. I, I, I'm i getting like nostalgic feelings watching this somehow. Even though this is the first Ultimate Tournament and I've never seen Inkling play. It's hilarious. Ooh. This is hilarious. This is like the funniest thing ever. If Sage makes it to Winner's Finals, I, I swear to God, the kill Sage told me he, he was prepared to go 0-2 today with Snake. That is such a Sage way to up tilt, yeah. I'm just saying. Like, that yeah. <laughs> literally just went 10 years in the past it. and just did it. He just did it! Just did it. He just did it. Like, facing the wrong way and everything. Yeah, so, you know, going straight into uh, Pokemon Stadium 2. Here we go. I mean, this is like, everyone's pretty much agreed this is like the new Smashville, quote unquote. Everyone loves this stage, dude. The, yeah. du the dual plats. <laughs> yeah, everybody's gonna love this stage until a character just dominates on it. Oh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll wait for that day. Oh, yeah. It's still like week one, so we'll, we'll see how the meta evolves. Yeah. But well, all things considered, it is a nice stage. Um, but right now, we have Numbers winning the trade war. Yeah, I, don't know I, I think Numbers is discovering that Splattershot is blowing up the grenades, even when happens. he throws them. Is that what happened? Ooh. Yeah, I saw it was happening oh, there. And John I, messed up. He didn't get a smash attack. And now he's out of ink. This could be the time to push the offensive for Sage. Oh, he let him breathe. Okay. Yeah, he's taking out a lot of damage right now. John's going to get that forward air. Yeah, man. I feel like, you know, it's very important for John to take this down. Yeah. He misses the opportunity to kill, and that is not it. No, he's going to live from that. If he gets one more throw into, like, a back throw... Using the Cypher to just give himself some leverage. It's got that is death. There's no way you're breaking out of that. Way too high a percent. You know, if you mash that out of that, man, we might, not, not, we might need to give him, like, to hospital or something. Like that, you cannot mash that fast. Yeah, got so. whiff grabs coming from both players. <laughs> yeah, Sage so trying to throw him into that grenade. It didn't work out for him. Yeah. 
You just throw him. Toss him. Look at that splatter shot. Again, he can't throw his grenades at a close distance anyways. Yeah, and I like what John's doing. Like, John's playing very patient. He's making Sage come to him. And he's only taking 0.3 damage, honestly. Yeah, because, you know, if, if it's... Because, look, you have to leave right now. If it's the other way around... He threw the grenade high to avoid the splatter shot. Smart stuff coming up from Sage. Oh, he let go of shield. I think he was trying to parry it, honestly. He was trying to parry and get a strong punish. Yeah, because that probably would have been his death if he got that parry. Oh, yeah, 100%. Inkling's dying at 100%. Oh, he's taking a lot of damage because he's got some ink on him. Lower defense. Sage mashed out and hit the grenade instead. Oh, wrong direction! No! To kill Sage, trying to turn it around. Yeah, he probably expected the cross up because, like, you know, you normally expect a cross up in any other game, but in this game, you cannot. Only certain moves can pass through opponents. So. Forward throw. Nikita. Nice catch. It's so quick. Yeah, and, you know, even though it's December, still no tech numbers in. <laughs> oh, no. That's a whole stock lead for John. Sage has a giant hill to climb. I don't know if he's going to be able to do it, dude. Yeah, I mean, John's pretty much been in control of this game. Yeah, and like, all the momentum has been in John's favor. He's playing out of control. And it seems like ever since he learned how to deal with the grenades, uh, it seems like Splattershot has blown up the grenades. Um, John is playing a more projectile-based game, so he does not deal with the projectiles up close. Well, actually, you know, wait a minute. Sage is doing a pretty good job not taking too much damage here. Yeah, 74%. Okay, now we got the combos coming out from John. Oh, and he got caught by the spot dodge. Yeah, oh, zero to seventy-five. That's what you said, though. Hey, back throw. Tried him that, to that grenade. There. Throwing out all the bombs and grenades. Just goes for the raw dash attack. That will kill eventually. Not this this early though. Trying to get him out. Good trap set up from Sage, he, forcing the roll onto the stage. He throw a grenade, two up smashes, just so that's how you can roll and you can up throw something. And Sage is not out of this just yet. The final stock, winner of this stock, is going to move on to uh, winner's finals to face off against Sinji. John does have a lead by a mere 60%. Numbers could easily, or Sage could easily break this gap. Okay. Get 100%. Nice patience by John. He has to recover high. Snake Ooh. is a sitting duck when he tries to recover low, which is why you'll see snakes go that high all the time. He just goes for the shield. Got caught by the roller! He landed right in front of it. Good mash oh, out good. coming from Sage. Good mash out. John looked like he you know, messed up a little bit also. Okay, yeah. recharging his ink, recharging his ink. He tried to cancel the roller so he can get that up smash. He is thinking about roller. The one thing on John's mind is roller. If he connects a roller, that will be the set. And I know Inkling has some type of, like, down throw to up air kill confirm. I don't know the window. John cannot do it. Okay. John sucks at it. So like, <laughs> he told me himself. He cannot do it. So. And the splatter shot is just actually just blowing up the grenades. This is yeah, dude. So he's got to throw it high. Gets caught. Ooh. Finds an opening. Okay. You know, and Sage still at 116%, man. So he's definitely not out of it. It's going to take a little bit more for Inkling yep. to kill reasonably. Like I said, Snake is a heavyweight. Yeah, and good and good grenade by John. Just to alleviate some of that pressure that Sage is putting on him. All the grenades. And start. there's a C4 plants on that left platform. I'm yeah. pretty sure John's aware of it. Gonna try to stay away from it. Oh. He's looking for a grab to try to Ooh. get the combo into it. Oh, that was super close. He almost got grounded. I don't know what happened. John yeah. just stopped. Yeah, Sage was waiting for him. Man. He's waiting for him to go into that platform. And John kind of scouted it out. Yeah. At this point, Sage just wants to stay airborne. Because if he's on the ground, he's a sitting duck for that roller. Because the roller will not ground you if you're midair. Seeing Whoa. way too many rolls, Sage! Gonna get caught by that forward smash, and John Numbers moving on to winner's finals. Yeah, man. Uh, so we have John Numbers, Sinji winner's finals, guys. Yeah, right there. I mean, you saw he did three rolls in a row. I'm not sure what was going on. Maybe he just ac the accidental buffer system. Sage was mentioning that he's not used to the buffer system just yet, and we definitely saw that just happen. I mean, three rolls in a row. What the heck? Give us a support, but let's move on into the next set. Here we go, losers top six, quarters baby. Frozen fighting off against the Kill Sage. HO3K battle versus e Echo Fox. Yeah, and right now, um, no, Palutena is uh, the new flavor character, the new <laughs> flavor top tier. Yeah, I mean, Frozen's been grinding with this character. And uh, Sage and him have not really had the chance to really play too much beyond like a couple of games. So this is gonna be like an interesting matchup we're gonna have today. The up air, double up air. And again, Frozen's definitely someone that might know the stake matchup back from like the uh, 
That one game that we don't really talk about. Oh, yeah, Smash 3.5? Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Anyways, 90% set on Frozen. <laughs> Down tilt, again, that's going to be his kind of punishment of choice out of shield. And these up tilts, man, killing me. Yeah, he's been on point with them. So Snake's entire game plan, you know, just wants to chill back, try to get those grenades cooking Ooh. to throw against her. That was good delay from Sage. He was waiting for the, the grenade to cook behind him before going for that throw. Yeah, and the way he changed momentum with the um, grenade pull. Good air dodge, but Didn't bad have air dodge, yeah, honestly. Have yeah, there's a lot of cooldown for that air directional air dodges. But it doesn't matter. Just uh, up tilts him. Yeah, Sends um, him flying. Yeah, that was unsafe on hit at that, that low percent, so. Yeah, that C4 is cooked. That was, that was a great trap coming from Sage. He, met, he flubbed the uh, pickup, though, because well, the thing was he had them all set up. He put a grenade down right there to cover neutral attack and neutral get up, a C4 in the left to cover the left, and then he just went to the right side, but then he just flubbed it after that. Yeah. Yeah, and Catches him with another C4, though. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, and Frozen not seeing those options. 132% on your boy Frozen. Goes for the grab. Breaks her neck a little bit. Up, wow. tilt, out of dash. This character is moving. Yeah, and another, yeah, yeah, another up tilt by Frozen. Man. I mean, up, another up tilt by Sage. Yo, Sage, are you sure you want to quit this character? <laughs> he was talking about after he wanted to go snake for this tournament for the hell of it, quote unquote. And after look that, he was going to pick a different one. Look at all this percent Sage is tacking on. Yeah, because he has a stock lead, he's going to take trades for days. He just wants to like, he wants to spawn a grenade on top of him, hold shield, <laughs> and they both take the hit that helps out the kill stage. As long as they're both getting hit, as long as Frozen's getting hit in the process and the kill stage stays alive, that's all he cares about. But his stock was just deleted, but he's still gonna be going for those trades, it, sitting at 0%. And he still got 12% on that trade before he died, so this is like pretty hilarious. Um, Meanwhile, he got Frozen's Palutena trying to make some comebacks. Explosive Flame's a really good projectile for her. Allows her to chill really far back, have like an instant ball of fire just spawn right in front of him. He can control where it's gonna be, either going for like a neutral one or like a smash angled one. Yeah, and I mean, right now, Palutena is within uh, it's up to a percent range. Ooh. Yeah, and he, he has definitely brought this back to He's got, already got him overlapping his percent. There he goes, gets the up air, not enough to get the kill on the heavyweight snake. Going for the air dodge, a little bit too far away for that forward smash to connect from Palutena. And I believe uh, uh, Sage the item because down throw back there was true, I believe. He wanted the up tilt, Frozen kept to his guns, held his shield for as long as possible because he knows that uh, Sage was searching. He was fishing for that up tilt. And Frozen actually got the punish out of shield. We've seen many people beforehand try to punish that out of shield and it was not working out for him. The thing is, if he would have just held shield like he did and the kill Sage went for a grab, he would uh, Frozen would not have died. That's why he opted to just go for that. It's like, I'd rather just take the damage than risk dying by letting go of shield, you know? Okay, we're going to Yoshi's story. Yeah, and changing that music on. Yeah. Uh, Yoshi's, uh, this is Melee, dude. This is actually the Melee song. Stop Bro, battle, don't you love that they gave Yoshi's um, final smash the freaking ultimate from I love that, dude. That's so good. Uh, you know what else I love? Main Wolf 77 coming oh. up with that hot sub. Thank and you so much, man. Main Wolf was here earlier. It's showing some support even when he's out of bracket, man. Dude, what a homie. But yeah, dude, Yoshi's final smash is just like the melee opening. It's just, it's just the uh, it's the Lion King. Yeah. Spoilers. <laughs> if you've never seen Lion King, I guess. Yeah, bro. Uh, we should, this, the stream should be banned. Yeah, hundred percent. All right, so, here we go. So these platforms are actually gonna allow, even though this is the kill stage's counter pick, they're gonna allow Frozen to be able to just kind of warp all over the place. Be able to try to get those cancels afterwards. Is, is this stage uh, smaller than battle stage still? It, so like I, th my my guess is that the blast zones are smaller I think, and then the stage is a slightly bigger. Like the platforms feel like a, like a little bit more room to run around. Cause Battlefield's blast zones are huge. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But right now, what did that dash attack really send him behind on hunts on the platform? My God. Okay. Got the grab. Ooh, dash attack. <laughs> and, and, you know, and stuck that C4 on the ground. Takes it. Whoa, he what, actually. Uh, uh, what, that trait? That was that a great tra trait. I was listening to Palutena scream for death. Like, what is she screaming about? And then she died. So that's why. Yeah, and, and, and Sage is sitting on that platform waiting yeah. for Frozen to approach just so he can get that 21%. That is the snake gameplay, dog. You just go for the trade. 
Wow, Blair. excuse me? Attack on tons of damage. Oh, that's 24%. Hello? Excuse me? Um, tilt? Yeah, and, and, you know, the movement with Snake right now, you know, just mixing up his landing options and not letting Frozen get, like, a you know, good read on him, so it'll take a lot of percent. Going for the Nikita, drops it on him, <gasps> goes for the rebound. What? A, that was a tick throw. It, excuse me? That was definitely a tick throw, that, dog. That hit Frozen and Sage grabbed him right out of him. Oh, he's going for the run back up. So get up attack. Ooh, we got that stack pushing him off. Yeah. Good read. And that's the setup. That's the, that is the He setup. does the up smash to force that. you to pick an option. And then he, it, the kill stage just goes for the option that he thinks you're going to do. And he has the up tilt ready to, ready to come out. Thought he was going to roll forward. And again, we're going to see Sage going for these trades, man. Yeah. And, uh, Spawn those grenades. That dash attack is really nice. Because even if you shield it, he'll go through the shield. Yeah, it you know, crests up and it's like almost unreactable. He flies pretty far. Oh, Frozen wants that up there. And I didn't even see that C4 stuck there. Dude, I don't think Frozen did. Yeah, th so the thing about pl the platform stages and um, against Snake, that the C4s and the grenades cover so much space with the explosion that you just get clipped even when you don't think you are. Just nice like, setup! He let go of the grenade with the you, shield! Did, okay, yo, run that back. Run, run that. Run, I need that, that replay back? right now. Back? Hold on, hold on. That back? He drops the grenade yo, with he, the shield he, he and then got the combo afterwards with an up air. Hello? Hello? That ju hashtag just snake thing. Hello? Dog. I don't think I'm on my, my, my dinner tonight, man. I don't know what's Yo, happening. One more time. Right one more time for me, Devin. Bro. Oh, my God. Because he back aired the grenade. You see him, like, adjust his glasses, too. Like, just his plan. That's crazy. That is like, it, it, he's literally the anime protagonist. Yeah, dude. This, this is Metal Gear Solid 6. The Ultimate Edition. But, okay, uh, we got Frozen with the counter pick here. Thinking about what stage he wants to take Mr. to kill Sage towards. And I'm guessing to kill Sage banned all variants of FD. Probably FD and Kalos if I were. Yeah. So that's where we're going to go to PS2. PS2 is also a pretty big stage. Oh, wants to be able to pick the music. I like this. I like that people are picking songs. This is what we need in our life. I'm not like a big fan of the Pokemon series, so like I'm not uh, like I don't know too much about the music there. Yeah. But I'm sure some of them are bo uh, are bangers, you know. Like I know the Red Blue songs, you know. I I'm not gonna lie, I'm not one of those people who are like really into the music. So oh word. So I'm not sure what the music is on these stages. I just you just don't do you know what music is? Um, I'm not sure. Isn't that like a form of sound? Yes. Ooh. Good educated guess. Oh, here we go. <laughs> grenade. God dang it. And this the, this the grenade placement by by the kill stage is just impressive. And you see Frozen just like, you know, fair. Just make the first stage. Okay, jump over that auto reticle. Just get it out of there. C4 is standing right at the kill stage's feet. Yeah, and you know, Sage trying to bait into it. And a nice parry Whoa. into the double grenade. You always love it when you see those power shields coming out strong. It's just Sage covering all these options. Again, throwing out the up smash, and catches the back here. Yeah, baited that jump with the back, and baited that jump by jumping off stage himself. Frozen is struggling to and find man, this opening. And but right now, you know, he has, he does have Snake at 94%. And Lucina, I mean, excuse me, Palace Hannah is pretty strong. Got the back here, trying to go for the C4 as well. Air Dodge is back onto the stage to avoid whatever follow up that Frozen was trying to do. And that dash attack. Oh, unfortunate SD coming out from Frozen. Yeah, I think uh, we're seeing certain players just like misjudge how good the air dodge is. Mm. Um, but with that being said, you know, for, uh, Frozen back airing Sage with the standard get up. Ooh, put him to sleep. Yeah, just break her neck a bit. Oh, here we go, Palutena. Yeah, man, grounded spikes. Oh. Back air, he's out of jumps. This could be a potential edge guard. Oh, and he ended it early. Good stuff by Sage. Yeah. He let go of the Cypher as early as possible. He would have been mega dead. <laughs> Setting up these grenade traps. Dash attack again. Man, Sage, Sage is setting up these grenades and covering all these options at the same time. It's like, it's kind of ridiculous. Runs <laughs> up, gets the grab. <laughs> oh, and a re-grab! Mixes him up. Excuse me? Frozen's struggling. He's going to... 
Ooh, good timing on Frozen's part. <laughs> abusing the iframes from the normal getup to avoid that up smash. And then putting Snake in disadvantage himself. Yeah. Okay, we take those. Watch up. There's a C4 on that platform. He needs to watch out. This could be the turnaround. Frozen gets the up air. That's a true confirm. Yeah, and the thing about that is, like, if Sage DI is out, that's a back air. Yeah. So that's also a true confirm. So I, I guess that's you die either way. Okay, 144%. The kills is just looking for that up tilt. Look at him. The way he's dashing back and forth. He went for it. The explosion's ready to go. And Sage is just gonna chill back, wait for the opening when he sees Palutena wide open for that up tilt to connect. Forward tilt? I really get that second swing. Ooh, look, that looks like an accidental roll coming out. Trying to apply pressure with that back air against Sage's shield. Both players, final stocks. Okay, you know, Palutena using that auto radical to kind of stave off some of the pressure that uh, Sage has been using with the grenades. Okay, down throw back air gets Sage back off stage. And if you're going to be able to use the uh, up beat to just kind of avoid the explosive flame, but this is looking like Frozen's game right now. Yeah. Sage could not get back to the stage. It ended up comboing explosive flame into explosive flame. Frozen moving on to losers semis after that set win. Yeah, I need to. Get All right, so we got uh, this is the set, guys. Remember, make sure to check out Xeno Saga 20. We got the Super Smash Brothers Ultimate monthly coming up this Saturday, December 15th. Over at 62 Orchard Street, second floor, which is where we are currently located. New York, New York. If you guys find yourself in the Manhattan area, come on down, stop on by. And what you guys know, coming out and uh, doing uh, snake things. And he doesn't mind as much, still gets the kill. But here we go. Final destination. First map, we got Venia fighting off against Nixie Greninja versus Captain Falcon. So this is a matchup that was really strange in the previous iteration of Smash in that they're just both really fast, they just want to hit, and they could do that very well. And from the little bit that I've been able to see out of these two characters, their game plans haven't really changed. They just want to press buttons on you. Yeah, that's exactly what they're going to be trying to go for. And here we go. Loser this is going to be going with a fifth place finish. Good setup. Benny gets so much off of that down tilt, setting up Nixie to get that forward air. Phenomenal start from Benny. I think one yeah. of the aspects of Greninja that definitely stuck around from Smash 4 is the fact that he's such a momentum-based character. He has all the tools for being able to stop someone, start up his combo, and then just keep it rolling. But if there's anybody that can stop anyone's momentum, it's going to be Nick. That Hydro Pump was called out so hard from Nixie. Had that down there ready to go, spiked him into oblivion. That was a good delay from Nick, but Venya was at the ready with that neutral air. Didn't get a follow-up after it, though. I think one of the new things that we can see is how well Venny has adjusted to how to utilize his tools. Uh, it's more specifically, up tilt. He's using that a lot more just for the sake of starting up his uh, his juggling and keeping that going. And then when he's ready to go in for the kill, down tilt is what he needs to, uh, to be up smash in that situation. But previously, up tilt used to be like one of his combo moves. Now it's just pop him up, keep him popped up. And that's one of the aspects of Final Destination that's always been a very strong aspect of this being the start of stage. I right, trying to dash back and forth, managed to take both of the hits of Neutral Air. Neutral Air one is phenomenal. I know Nick Nick has been going on and on about it yeah. on Twitter. It's a combo starter, and you can just drag your opponent. Like you just go. Falcon has his way with you in the air, and it just never ends. That was a fantastic parry coming out from Nixie, trying to get that big punish afterwards. But Nixie's already sitting on his final stock. Benny went for the ultimate with that down air, but because he was high enough in the air, he did not SD from it. He knew exactly what he was doing. Big punish time. <laughs> there we go. Was that melee for a second? Hold on. I wouldn't blame you for thinking so. We can't take those down airs now, so it leading up into forward air. Okay, chill, 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 chill. If we felt it resonate <laughs> in our soul. I want that every time down air to knee lands. And it's going to land a lot in Nick's hands. But Nick has to play. Pretty safely. I, I don't know if he's going to play safe, per se. But he definitely has to keep his mind. He's out of jumps. Oh, I... Yeah, nah. right. Good mix-up with the Hydro Bump. Regaining his resources to get back to the stage safe and sound. Yeah, this is Venia we're talking about. Even yeah. when he's got his back against the wall, he's still never out of options. Yeah, but Nixie tacked on a lot of damage with all that stage control he was running with. Within the grab, spot dodge. Netting his... Oh, not the victory just yet, even though we saw the sparks fly. Yeah, man, dramatic finish is like, 
the biggest falsehood. Because look, no yeah. finish there, but no we finish can get there. the game one yep, in. Yup, yup, that's absolutely right. Now the thing is, like, Nick C got so much damage off of that stage control that he had there at the very end. But he was like, because Venny was only at like 30 or 40%. And then he didn't get back on stage for a good 15 seconds, so all that damage was tacking on. But Benny was just looking for that one down tilt to connect into the combo finisher he needed. So now we're going to go into game two. Nixie thinking about his bands. Yeah, I think the uh, that last stock of that game, even though Venny did win the game one, I think it's just indicative of what Nick can accomplish with Falcon. Because he just... He just throws you in jail. You're at the ledge, and what are you really doing? If not for the fact that Greninja is being piloted by someone so confident about his movement, I don't really know if someone else would have been able to get off the ledge like that. So here we go. Final destination again. It down tilts again. You notice that little new animation coming up from Greninja. He like does a little karate chop at the uh, opponent's ankles. There we go. Opting to go for that dash, cancel it into a jab. <laughs> There's a bunch of new things we gotta get used to looking at. One new thing in particular, I think a lot of people are gonna have to get used to is the fact that Uppy from Falcon threatens kill now. That was a good use of the parry mechanic because uh, what was going on there is that there's a multi-hit like Hydro Pump that doesn't really do like flinching knockback or anything. You're allowed to just let go of shield, get the free parry, so you can instantly move so you can get the punish as fast as possible. Good use of the shield mechanic from Nick. But Venia. Coming in strong, connecting that up smash, unloading the toad on him. <laughs> he Unfortunately, the toad got unloaded a little too long. Now, I'm, I'm curious what happened there, because I think he went, I possibly went for like a down air. Let's uh, let's check the tapes. While we're checking the tapes. Can, can you actually? All right, so anyways, multi-jab at the ledge. Gonna allow Venia to get some sort of stage control. However, the Hydro Pump win box is definitely not in his favor anymore. And he got that punish with a down smash afterwards, too. That was just super unfortunate. Okay, so what happened? We checked the tape. What happened is that Nixie footstooled him. So That's he just fell into point. his he just fell into his death. He's too down, he was too below. Don't know if that was accident or not, but we take those. Absolutely. Now coming back to the match at hand. Percentage is at a dead even and I feel like stage control is just gonna keep on swapping between these two. They're so violent with how they keep on approaching each other. But they they respect each other's attempts at controlling the stage, which is why I feel like it's rotating so rhythmically. Man's looking for that down tilt into up smash. There he gets it again. Nixie a little bit too high that time around. Trying to go for a second air dodge. Not enough to get that kill just yet. Nixie's si surviving at 135%. Good catch on that roll. Just going for the dash attack. A very meaty attack. He stays active for a long time. He thought he, I think he was trying to go for like a forward tilt. Maybe he didn't come out. They both looked like they weren't ready for that interaction. Yeah, yeah. Just Benia pulled the trigger first. Falcon kick raw right in his face. Dash attack with a follow up. All right, uh -oh. I like the substitute attempt. Interesting. Yeah, as was brought up earlier, substitute now can pierce shield. So yep. it's like, oh! oh my good god. Venia jumping out there to solidify that kill. Taking a 2-0 victory over Nixie, who is actually picked as a fan favorite to win this tournament, finishing off at fifth Look how place. Venia ends this. Who does that? Venia does. I mean, the thing is, he had a stock to play with. So he even did. if he that whiffed and went flying into the blast zone, he had another stock to come in very fresh stock while Nixie was at high percent. So yeah. regardless, All right. Kalos Pokemon League. Here we go. Sinji versus John Numbers. And there is no better setting I could feel for these two players. It's a large stage. The platform gives a lot of variety to how these players can zone each other out, how they can camp, how they can return to the stage if they end off, off of it. And it's rather big in the grand scheme of things. Uh, as far as competitively viably stages go, uh, Kalos is one of the few that is notably larger than Battlefield. You know, assuming you're using Battlefield as like a point of reference. And you also got those platforms to play with, man. They're kind of chilling off the edge. So it kind of extends it even further, you know? Yo, what is this song? It's a jammer. Good foot still coming out from John. Goes for the trampoline to finish him off. That was all according to plan for John. I feel like this is the quickest stock you'll get a chance to see in this set. Uh, for those of you who aren't used to the old days, this is this is a set that's, that tends to go on a bit longer. It's just like they, they know how to respond to each other's tools. Yep. Actually, I feel like on that note, Sinji might find himself at a slight disadvantage only on the fact that John is so acclimated to fighting Sinji's Pac-Man. 
He's done so countless times. The thing is, this is a new Pac-Man. Okay, that's something you gotta remember about. So he's got, Sinji's got some, definitely got some new tricks to bust out on the table, but John's playing a completely different character, trying to play this Rushdown-esque character, which I might not be used to. Also, it definitely doesn't has to be way more wary of grab, for instance, because grab is actually like a functioning move in this game. Yeah, it's not a meme. It's not great, but it's not a meme. Yeah. And that was a great track coming out from Sinji. He actually placed the bell on the platform to force John to be able to have to like either dash forward or roll, make it, a, a, you know, go for a commitment besides jump, because he would have got caught by the bell. And Sinji knew exactly what was going to happen. Point blank bell into a forward smash. Inky coming through. Now a matter of seeing what happens for us. It's just like, that's just with Sinji tying things up. And still two minutes cooked down on the timer. It's... No, no, it, I feel, me personally, what I'm going to find the most interesting out of this is not who's going to maintain stage control, because ultimately I feel like that's in, in Sinji's favor, and it's just going to be John zone breaking a lot. But, like, how do they get their damage out? Sinji's still trying to figure out, like, what are the combos I can go for? Like, what, that was one of the most well-known things about his Pac-Man in Smash 4 was, you know, how is he going to get his combos? How flashy is he going to be? How effective is it going to be? Flashy or not, he's going to try to have to get this victory. Now we got numbers. At this point, numbers could easily go for a, uh, a, a roller, a splat roller to try to ground Pac-Man and try, you know, follow up with that O smash. Because there's one thing that Inkling struggles with. If you can't get the roller, then they can't, like, actually get their kill because they, a lot of their moves are really hard to land, like smash attack-wise. That was out of this world. Using the roller as an active hitbox to get rid of the Hydra and then carried it forward to catch Sinji completely off guard. I yeah, actually brought up a really good point with Inkling in that yeah. Inkling doesn't struggle to get damage in the slightest. No. Like, no. John is definitely going to be the aggressor in this relationship, but when it comes to the kills, outside of Roller, like, securing a smash attack, John only really has up there to up there to rely on. But the thing is, like, John's ink is super low. So, like, that's why you see Sinji trying to play super aggressive. He doesn't want him to try to get that charge or anything. He doesn't have enough for a splat grenade, for instance. He could be insanely useful in this matchup to try to, like, deflect the projectiles. Use that as a way to try to chase down Sinji, just to, like, use that as, like, cover for himself. Forward smash, not enough to get that hydrant. We're learning just as he is. Good call out from numbers. Spacing away from that dash attack. Super jump gonna get knocked away by that hydrant. Really smart call from Sinji. Even if it's not going to get a you know a quick kill, it's just going to keep on building up the damage. It's something that I think he's going to have to do, and that's not going to kill from out deep. Yeah, he had that key ready to go. Key is a very fast projectile. It's going to have some huge knockback. Number sees it coming. Opting to recover low instead. Looking for that up there. <laughs> Both of them are just hunting for their kills now, but it's going to be Sinji who manages it out. Yeah, John ended up going for that jump out of shield and getting caught by it. Comes back in with the back here, but great directional influence coming out from Sinji. Should I say uh, shuffle? <laughs> uh, directional shuffle, whatever the heck it's called. There we go. Back air catches him out of the jump. Now, One stock apiece. Yeah, these boys are sitting on their, uh, their last two and a half minutes on the clock. It's gonna be fun. I don't think either of them are gonna go for the uh, the timeout, but it's an option on the table. John playing a more aggro character than we've previously seen, and Sinji, I think, acclimating very well to the movement mechanic changes for um, for Pac-Man and playing him a bit more aggro. He was always known as a bit more of an aggressive Pac-Man compared to others, but now I think the game around him changed for the better. Now he's getting back onto the stage. Wants to jump over the hydrant just to like, you know, try, try to like bait out when the water's gonna come out or not. So it was for the overhead swing of the, the splat grenade. At this point, Sinji's playing a great keep away game, and like you said, the timer is starting to tick little by little. You know, the Inkling's movement options, like Inkling shouldn't have too much of an issue to get in on the pack now. I think it's just, Sinji's had really smart placement of his trampoline and of his, uh, more importantly, the high train. He puts it at such a distance where, like, John has to respond to it. Whether he's jumping over it, he's getting rid of it on his own rights, he's sitting there and defending. He's not close enough to just completely go bypass and then go to the platform that Sinji's had. Great parry coming from Sinji. Get back down on the stage, safe and sound. I mean, it's very broadcast itself. Gets caught by the bell with a forward smash coming out. It looks like Sinji's Pac-Man might be the, uh, the, d the day one uh, winner here, man. It is. He is pulling, pulling out all sorts of tricks that like no one's really prepared for.
Yeah, I mean, it's it's the real deal. It's just that these are different types of tricks that... Did they go to Battlefield Gout for Planes? Yeah. Okay. I mean, John Numbers' is counter pick, he's definitely going to go to Gout Planes to play some uh, music. But, oh, I think someone has a controller turned on. Alright, looks like they got it fixed. Moray Towers, there we go. This is the music that you don't really get to hear that much in this game because it's only on one stage. I love Splatoon's music. Some choices are a little suspect, but for the most part, it has a phenomenal soundtrack. Splat 1 and 2. They like, they, like create their own little language, right? The little they have I, I like to call it the Wumi speak. <laughs> Not Wumi. It, it does have a, a name. I just forgot what it is. That and also Octarian has a uh, language. Two, one, Either way, we're here on Battlefield Formation of Mario Towers. No, oh. this stage is lit at night, actually. Oh, the night version of Mario Towers is amazing. Just gonna put ink on him. Yeah, ink is such a it's such a cool mechanic. Not only are you like you're nailing down more damage, but like you have to be careful of how to utilize it. It's very much from the game that it calls from. However, with splat the splat roller I feel gets like hurt the most when you don't have it. Now listen man, I know there's a match going on, but I cannot stop watching those cats in the background. Oh Judd and Judd yeah, Jr. Judd and Judd are Jr. man slaying right now. They're they're just having the time of their life. They're just loving this like inkling fight off against a Bandai Namco character. They're like, ah, that squid looks fat. Yeah. Where is its tentacles? Oh, for the forward air, Cindy's already at 100%. Numbers are starting to adapt here. They put that splat bomb, forcing Cindy to go for like a normal getup, a little slightly delayed. This is a pretty comfortable change of pace. Being as Battlefield is uh, is no longer like a large stage, you it's know what? a lot more acclimated for being able to cover space that well. And see John putting oh that to use already. God, that was such a great punish. You know, you just saw the grab coming out, ran right back into him because you know he really does have a great gra uh, punish game. Being a, she's a very fast character, you know. Yeah. Okay, so he's gonna chill back, try to throw those projectiles. You have to respect the grab this time around. Okay, numbers. Trying to mix up how he's gonna get back on the stage, thing at 101%. So that's a fun fact. I, I haven't seen John do this yet, but I know that it can be used to some effect. Uh, Inkling can go from the underside of Battlefield from one side to the other very effectively without using a lot of ink and without having to wait too long. And Numbers was just chilling there for so long that the key was able to come out and nail that kill right, right in the nick of time. It's a bit of a slow burn, but that's just sort of how it gets it has to get played out. I think Shinji's responded to the counter pick incredibly well, though. He's been almost glued to center stage battlefield, and I'm pretty sure that's how you're going to want to play this stage, especially with a character like Pac-Man, because it's like, lock down your defenses, use the platforms defensively the best you can, and just keep your opponent away. Just defend the castle as best as you can. It's And Shinji's absolutely no stranger to that style of play. Oh, here we go. Again, throwing that splat bomb onto the fire hydrant just to push it off slightly. Good catch on that bell. You, know, you saw him going for that forward air. Able to catch the hydrant. going to be able to push him off. Sitting at 108% off stage. Where is he going to land? Sinji's not going to let him uh, go for that top platform. Like, this entire match, in my opinion, is just them centered around the fire hydrant, right? They're playing around it. It just seems to be like the, the focal point that they just have to, like, Wait for it to come out, and then just go for the follow-up afterwards. So, con contrary to previous iteration of Pac-Man in Smash 4, like Fire Hydrant wasn't that potent of a uh, piece of material because stages were just a bit larger, and especially on Battlefield where it was just a larger stage in general. Fire Hydrant didn't lend itself too well to covering space, but look at it in re relation to everything going on. Fire Hydrant's pretty big. The stage, it's fairly normal, but it's covering so much space it's getting. Sinji such a good opportunity to funnel the options that his opponents have. Although, let's not count out John yet. He's doing a phenomenal job of surviving. English chilling at 205%. Try to run up that. I would say that. I mean, he got the throw, and he was put in that prime position to roll against the edge of the stage, get that grab, back throw him into the blast zone, and that's all she wrote. Up throw, trying to get the follow ups afterwards with the up airs. Yeah, there's, generally speaking, there's not as many uh, combos off of throw, or at least it's not nearly as combo-oriented as some players may be used to. Some characters still do. Some characters can move out of their uh, throws, but Pac-Man does not seem to be one of them, at least not yet. 
Give Sinji time to cook with this character, though. You know, he gets the Galaxian ship, the double hit, following up with a forward air. The brutal forward throw, man. He like he puts you, he puts your face to the that gun, dude. The barrel of the gun. And it's like, yeah, it's just ink, but it's like it's, it's right there. It's brutal. They're trying to go for that forward smash on the Hydra and still gets a punish from Sinji. Things are looking pretty bleak for John. It's rough in these streets of Incopolis. That was a great trap. He was trying to bait out the ledge jump to avoid that uh, hydrant or the bell coming oh, out. Oh no. Oh, uh, gee, I think he went to go for a short hop or something because like that was a little bit too slow with the back air punish. And that key, not enough to get the kill just yet, but he still has to take away his two stocks. This is looking like Sinji going to yeah. grand finals. Free trip down there. Pac-Man. Yo, is Pac-Man on its way to winning the first zero? Actually, I've got a que question. Uh, Devin, since this is a different Smash game, does that mean that we have a new set of champions? I'm not sure. I because I've thought about that too. Like, does the champion lineage like continue? Yeah, or it's, it's, I think it's start fresh. They've won Xenos. They've won Xenos, and the Xeno series is still counting upwards. But What's we haven't. Ha we have yeah, it's a new game. We haven't had a Smash Ultimate. There's no yeah, Ultimate I champion. Might, I yeah, might we say need, first champion. We need maybe. a new champion. A, the classic rivalry. And we've got two characters who, I feel like Ven uh, Venia's Greninja does a great job of encompassing what made Smash 4 so sound. A very combo-oriented character, great at edge guarding where he needed to. Are and they fighting? They are. Okay. Yeah, they're fighting. Good Don't you love guys. when game one, like, everyone's flopping around, so it's like, is this a button check? Mm? Anyways, uh... Venia, that old bay, and Frozen bringing that new hotness. Because a lot of people weren't used to seeing Palutena going as deep as she is. She's a good character now. Yeah, definitely. Has a lot of movement to help her out. But Venia trying to go deep with that back air. Definitely been practicing a lot with this character. I mean, I think it was just like a very smooth transition for Venia to go from Smash 4 to this. Look at that. It just got nailed that kill. Yep. So solidly. I brought this up earlier where it's like, yeah, Venia might not know the specific intricacies of Ultimate Greninja, but the changes that Ultimate brings us are very movement oriented. And that's always been an aspect of play that Venia has prided himself on was his movement. Now he glides across the stage and always positions himself right where he wants to be to give his opponent how. I guess that short out back here. Ooh, we tried to ready up with an up smash afterwards as well. Would have been cute. Yeah, Frozen trying to figure out how to, like, just space around Greninja. Because a lot of Palutena's spacing tools are really good. They're just not very fast. Auto Radical can't lock onto Greninja quick enough for it to really matter. And Explosive Flame, it takes a lot, a lot of time for that to come out. It's great for covering when it comes to the ledge guard, but... Not so much if you're trying to stop a speeding frog. And you know what? This is actually a great reason why Palutena loves the triplots. You saw him go for the warp cancels there to just try to mix up where he was going to land. To throw Venia a little bit off, give him a safe landing. That was going to DI a little bit to the right, which is why we went for that back air. But Venia sets him up with a down tilt. Both these players, he is going super deep for that Hydro Pump, trying to get the kill, pushes him off, and he is done. And that's the first time that we've seen Hydro Pump go for the Gimp kill. It's worth noting that it doesn't seem like it's... Um, Wind box is that strong. I've noticed this is that just in this match alone, Benny has gone for it a couple of times, and it hasn't really impacted work. <laughs> Frozen finally answering all this button pressing on Venia by just slamming him with the counter. And for those who aren't aware, the counter has also been rolled in with a reflector now. It's, it's kind of awkward, but hey, I guess it's cool to have all those tools wrapped into one button. Landing down with that forward air. Yeah, I think by the end of this game one, Frozen's going to have learned that he can only really use Explosive Flame when it's like super safe to use it. Otherwise, it's going to be curtains for him real quick as game one falls into Venia's favor. Literally, that entire game was Venia landing down tilt after down tilt, and they just led into so many finishers that he just, like, he stole that game, honestly. Like, like Oh, Frozen, he took the money and ran. Yeah, he, he definitely did. If you see Frozen laughing about it, too, he's like, he doesn't really know... What's really doing this matchup? Because, like, again, this is a game 
very brand new 74 characters to play with. Like, there's going to be matchups that you don't know on day five. Like, I'm, I'm, I guarantee you that. And uh, Venia might not know Palutena. And I know Frozen for Effect does not know Greninja in this game just yet. I mean, yeah, yes, there are, like, the hole they carry from Smash 4, but it's, uh, I'm interested to see how this game's going to evolve in, like, the next month. Yeah. Month one is going to be really interesting to see. Year one, just seeing what changes after that is going to be wild. Mm. Like, just just think of it this way. By February's time, we'll have our first DLC character. Yep. Piranha, Piranha Plant, Plant is going to be playable. So we barely get three months before this game changes radically. And there also is a patch coming next week. I'm hoping it's nothing drastic because the game's too early for a patch, honestly. Oh, I yeah. hope it's just, like, bug fixes and, like, maybe the online. But, you know, uh, like, there's... You know what I just realized? This is going to be the first time that the Smash community gets to see, like, detailed patch notes for a game. Because ARMS and Splatoon Hopefully. has been looking at this for a while. Hopefully. I'm just saying, if, if Smash breaks the trend of patch notes actually making sense... Maybe godlike, but here we go. Smash Ville. Get that platform in there. It's only going to move for very temporarily. Yo, and people now we complained that. about the platform moving in there within the first. I like, love it. Yeah, the person on the right has advantage. Bet. <laughs> Let me move for during the 3 2 1 count. I will see if I can make use of that platform. Either way, platform sitting just in the middle as it is on hazardless. I think it's actually going to lend itself really well for, at the very least, for Frozen taking back control of the stage. I feel like that was his biggest issue in game one, was that the stage was just owned by Venia. Like, at no point was it ever really traded over to Frozen. He's even trying to, like, apply that counter off of the neutral air. Good retreating forward air from Venia. Trying to push him off the stage. Now, at this point, like, he's doing, Venia's doing a fantastic job of spacing out on the edge of the stage. You see him going for that down tilt and then going for the jump into a short hop forward air just to apply some pressure. Ooh. Gets smacked around with that shield. Yeah, I think uh, Frozen's going to have to actually put a lot of use with that shield for this match if he wants to try and do anything safely. He went so deep for that neutral air. And we got warps abound. He can just do those reps infinitely too if his uh, inputs are proper. Um, I'm sorry, Smashville is actually a hilarious stage for Palutena. Oh! And Frozen's doing exactly what All of that. respected. All of that was off of a parry, dog. Got the parry to the down tilt. I don't even care if any got that stock. Frozen got that game, He's got a whole nother one to play with. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, you can see there is a chance that Frozen could lose that stock very early. We saw him get gimped before. Oh, yeah. So the possibility is always there. Never count out the com comeback. Like, you're always losing this game until you're on the better end of the victory screen. That's just how it is. Forward air into dash tech. Got the combo going. The back air's a really good move to go for, too, because it's like she, like, extends her arm out a bit and allows her to, like, retreat. Not only that, but it also has invulnerability on the shield itself. So you actually can't do much to her during that end dash attack. And, you know, you don't see Frozen going for up smash too often, but when it does, uh, that covers jump stuff. That covers double jump. It is a beam of light. I really hope yeah. it would cover if it's firing that far up. There you go. Just goes for the throw. We got a picture taken. Yo, oh, my that, man wanted a that picture beautiful for the moment. moment, dude. That Kodak moment. Make sure you get that throw caught. What the hell? He did it from <laughs> out deep. <laughs> Yo. That was a godlike explosive flame. <laughs> Completely caught him off guard. Watch this. Nuts. Why did Take he that. Take that little screenshot. I like it. I like it. Here we go. He was like, explosive flame. Bet. And then because what happened is he knew that Venny was going to jump off and try to scare him and double jump back. Because that's like the classic. Everyone does that. If they don't want to commit, they just jump on, double jump back just to make, make them feel fearful. Yeah. And Frozen's like, nah, fam, you're dead because he did that. Threw the explosive flame right behind him. And we're jumping into game three on Battlefield. Triplats abound. A phenomenal show of callouts from Frozen, showing that he knows very well of Venia's habits. But how well is that going to help him on a stage where he can't really move around as freely as he could on Smashville? We shall find out. I mean, Venia loves Battlefield. He, lo he loved it in Smash 4, and he loves it in this game. He gives him so much mobility to work with. He can jump around all the platforms, do some, like, runoff platform back airs, forward airs. We got another parry coming out. But it, unfortunately for uh, Venia, that was on a multi-hit. So if you parry a multi-hit and it's still going, like, it's you're, just, you're still going to get hit by it. Yeah. Parries only give you a 14-frame advantage on the interaction, so it's like... If your move is still chilling, it's still chilling. 
but I actually want to bring up how you talked about Battlefield being uh, a favorite stage for Venia. I feel like in Ultimate, it's going to be even better for Greninja just because you don't have these ultra-wide blast zones, but you still have a lot of space around the stage. This is space that Venia can use incredibly well for the sake of edge guarding, going out deep to secure his kills, or assume he's just on stage, he can get his kills a little bit earlier than he would be able to before, which is always a welcome addition. Speaking of his kills early, so he's gonna get that down tilt into an up smash. Venia closing out that first stock away from Frozen. And look at the way that he's moving. He's making. <laughs> he's moving right into the blast. Now. Forget I said out. anything. Why not? That's the spawn in throughout the random up smash because you know Venia's gonna jump like a frog that he is. He's so. always moving. He's always trying to stay awake, but like. Frozen's just aware of his antics, and he's doing a really good job of using Power Tennis tools to at least force Venia to change things up. And Venia coming in with that dash attack, pushing Frozen off. Out of jumps, trying to push him off with the Hydro Pump, but spawn just in time onto the stage. It seems the Hydro Pump doesn't push as much when they're in the middle of their up B now, which that's something that Venia was able to do so well in Smash 4, was pushing people as they started their recovery. Now it's like, gotta do it when they're in free fall. Not that Venia can't. We've already seen him get it done once, and I'm sure we'll see it innumerable times oh, as, yeah. uh, as this game develops. Oh, Khan with the Water Shuriken still living. It's back on the stage, safe and sound. Trying to hold that shield. Venia wanted that follow back for the dash attack so badly. <laughs> Yo, you know what I just realized? In this particular matchup about why Hydro Pump is like, especially not as useful for edge guarding the recovery. So. Um, one thing that might not be as clear with Palutena's specials, as I did mention that a few of them got combined from customs in Smash 4, is that her up B is actually two moves what they used to be. Not only is it the warp, but it's also a change to her movement in air drift, where she moves a lot faster once she's in that free fall, which helps uh, Palutena get herself back on stage. But most notably, it helps nullify a lot of the movement changes that the wind box from Hydro Pump presents. Wow, that counter was held for so long. Oh, yeah, she just hides behind that shield, bro. It's safe back there. Why would you want to come out? So many efficient for those down tilts. The Trump, trying to go for the spike afterwards, punishes the ledge attack with a forward smash. Final stocks. Loser this going home with a fourth place finish. Winner moves on to Loser's finals to face off against John Numbers. Oh, a little bit too close for that explosive flame to work. Maybe he's hoping that Benny was going to dash dance backwards. Yeah. There's only so many times you can call out someone on the same habit before it just doesn't really work in your favor. But the percentage is still relatively low. If Frozen can still tie this up, Venia can still run away with it. It's all about who's going to maintain this stage. And right now, this has been Frozen's battlefield. A very big change from what we saw in game one. Frozen's just been doing such a good job of forcing Venia off so that Frozen must have the stage control. And once he has it, the zoning game becomes a lot better because it's like, all right, I know you're coming in. So I'll funnel in my pressure as we go, and then just force you off of me the old fashioned. Oh, he rolled right behind him with that forward smash, trying to follow up with that water shuriken. Dash attack. Ooh. Catches him with the explosive flame that actually killed Frozen coming out with Palutena. Moving on to losers of finals. Just kind of like sneaking in that explosive flame. It's very devastating. He was only at 113% from the middle of the stage, and that did like 20 damage. Yeah, and the indicator for where it's going to appear is just a <laughs> tiny little sparkle. It's just like, I'm over here. Yeah, just to get That's those true. emotes coming out. But before that, game one, Losers Finals, Pokemon Stadium 2. Also, amazing pick on the music. Uh, no, yeah, he's just going to go deep because I guess you can. I mean, that was like an accident, bro. But we're Either way, so, Frozen played it off. Yeah, he, he got back to the stage, but already took a hefty amount of damage. So again, we got Inkling coming out with the roller. Now, while that ink's on the ground, the opponent's movement speed is lessened a bit, so they don't get a, as much movement as they wanted. It only lasts a little bit, though, because the ink disappears relatively quickly. And now he's out of ink. Time to push the envelope. Now, I, I touched on this briefly when we saw uh, John Numbers fight, facing off against Sinji in the winner's finals, but uh, Inkling is really good at zone breaking. It's a very fast character. It has a lot of moves that allow you to just interrupt what your opponent's doing, break into your own combos. I feel like you're going to see more of the same of that against Palutena because, again, she's a zoning-style character, and she's forcing someone to be at that mid-range. She doesn't want anyone super far because Inkling can just get um, the ink back, start throwing splat bombs, shoot with a splatter shot, and just cover the, uh, the space. But moving too close, 
It's like Link's combo game. Yeah. But he's not afraid to move in close, man. He's got that neutral air going off stage with that warp, trying to cancel it into a forward air. You see Frozen moving with this character. He wants to win this tournament. Again, he was one of the two players that was, like, voted to, po to potentially win this tournament. He is making the loser's run of his life to get that run back. Again, explosive flame. Bro, it just kill. kills. I just, it shocks me every time it has that much you literally knockback. My god. Like, not even as a figure of speech. You just explode. Disintegration. Neutral air, great combo starter. Try to get the grab follow up. No punish coming from John. Grab, uh, grabs do have a lot more of the cooldown afterwards, so they're super punishable this time around. Yeah, grabs low key kind of booty right now, especially because, mm. most importantly, what grabs can normally counter shields. Shields are kind of booty right now, too. And because of these factors, you're going to see players going for trades a lot more, going for just back off, stave off the offensive, and just try to match out with a better hitbox. And Smash Ultimate, damage in 1v1s are way more than in free for alls. That's why we're seeing people like take a hefty amount of damage in these matches. Okay, trying to go for that roller. Avoiding the splat bomb. See, now this is the point when Frozen has a little bit of ink on him, which is going to lower his defense. Definitely wants to chill back and wait for that ink to wear off. I, I've yet to really see John Numbers go for like a pummel a j off of a jab that tries to try to uh, put ink as much as possible onto his opponent. The reflect's coming out. I haven't seen that too often. The yeah. down B is like a combination of both the counter and the reflect. You know, it either yeah. does a physical attack and uh, projectiles. Unlike how Smash 4, there were two separate moves that you could equip. Yeah, I want to know what went behind the design process of Paul Atena for this game where they were like, wow, we really designed this character like 16 times over. Why don't we just do it all at once? Yeah, that was godlike. I mean, hey, we're seeing the Palutena here in Loser's Finals, so clearly something went right. Mm -hmm. Have ourselves a winning game here. Oh, got the roll. Unfortunately for John, he didn't cancel it in time, so didn't get the kill. Good call out with that up smash, though. Knew exactly what he was going to warp into. If you get predictable with those, it's very similar to, like, Pikachu's up B, with quick attack, which is, like, if you know where they're going to land, you can easily get a punish. Got a good kill coming from John is Numbers. That forward tilt? Yes, sir. All right. You just pistol with him. It was with that little uh, water gun. Wow, he's going so deep for that down air. Oh, no. He's put in a bad spot. John was trying to get that early gimp. Only I takes John, 21 damage. John might have actually saved him at some point interacting with him just because teleporting directly upwards into the ceiling of Pokemon Stadium, definitely not the best place you want to place yourself regardless of having increased movement. A splatter shot putting a lot of ink on Frozen. A lot of people's instinct is to try to challenge that, but instead you just take so much damage in the process and you are completely inked up. If you're max inked, that is 1.8 times more damage, but it does not matter. Get that grab, back throw into Oblivion. Now Frozen just trying to wait out the time while he's got ink on him. Doing a good job of just trying to space away with Explosive Flame. Auto Reticle, a little bit more useful in this matchup from uh, what we saw previously. Um, but that's just because Inkling's movement a little bit more linear. Even though Inkling has really good movement, can't really do too much with it. Got that back here again. Okay, just trying to open him up with that up till numbers looking for that opening, gets the grab. 102%. Good call out from Frozen, recognizing that Numbers was just going to go for that dash dance, waiting for that opening. And that looked like a... Honestly, he knew that he was going to mash out that fast, so he just wanted to go for a quick burst option with that dash attack. I like it, but I feel like he could have... Oh, he's put in a bad spot! He got a wall spiked with that back air. Frozen, taking away... Losing game one to John Numbers. Dude, look at how oppressive Inkling is at the ledge, though. Like, we're sent so far off stage, and... and Frozen really can't move anywhere else. He had to avoid the splat bomb. He had to avoid the forward air. Like, there's only so much you could do, man. Yeah. All right. Next game is going to be taking us to Battlefield. Thinking about those counter picks. Well, the thing is, like, in this tournament, guys, we have 10 legal stages right now with two stage bans. So you got the normal five starters, right? <laughs> it's going to be Smashville, Battlefield, Final Destination, Kalos Pokemon League and Pokemon Stadium 2 as the five starters. And for the counter picks, we have Lilac Cruise, Town and City, Yoshi's Story, Yoshi's Island, and I am missing one. Did you say Lilac Cruise? Yes. Did you say Kalos? Yes. Did you say Nova? Counter picks. Oh, oh, Unova. That's one I missed. Yeah. There you go. You got it. All right, here we go. We're here on Smashville. Oh, back here? We've seen Frozen put this stage to excellent use before. Now it's time to see if he can do it against. 
Uh, so I, far, not too yeah, hard. Nah, I'm just gonna stop while I'm ahead because I can't sleep on numbers. Thank you. Yeah. The thing is, Numbers is off to a, a fantastic start right off the bat because he's getting that, he's consistently getting those back airs on the ledge whenever uh, Frozen goes for a warp recovery. It's like Numbers knows he's going to go for it, so yeah. you might as well try to answer. Gets the roller again. Just people, they fall down to the ground. They don't expect Numbers to just do it raw because, honestly, a splat roller, not the safest option to go for because if you shield that, you're, this inkling is wide open for a punishment. You but could, it's a high-risk, high-reward, you know? You could shield it. You could uh, trade with it. It doesn't have that great of a uh, hitbox. Also, you could just jump if you're in position, too. And now Frozen sitting at super high percent, but not for long. He is sent flying. Two stocks away for John to get his rematch against Sinji in Grand Finals. <laughs> Again, uh, trying to challenge the splatter shot. I think that that's the option that Frozen is starting to realize that he has to go for. It's to jump over the splatter shot, go for the fastball, and then get the punish afterwards. Which is why he might have chosen Smashville as a stage of choice. Using that little platform in the middle of the stage to allow for uh, vertical mobility. Yeah, the the movement options that Frozen gets out of that platform just makes it such an immeasurably good stage. It might be good to remember in the future to keep it away from him. But nonetheless, John has put it to excellent use as well. He's really just been mollifying this match to be from ledge to ledge. And if the, the battle's taking part at the ledge, it doesn't matter how well Frozen can use that platform. It's just a like no point. Frozen was trying to get that counter against the forward smash. Ends up whiffing it, got a free punish coming from John. Again, splatter shots coming out abound from John. I mean, there's no reason not to with the wind box that the bullets have on them keeping you at a distance. It's super safe from John to start just waving the splatter shot around from a distance. Look at the shield pressure. Yeah, but the thing is, it's good to apply that shield pressure. It's good to just take the shield pressure because that splatter shot wastes the ink from Inkling. It does, however, I feel like the way that John is using it, he's doing it in a way that it's like, yeah, he's forcing you out of shield, now the next interaction gets you off stage, and then he just recharges his ink again. Although, Frozen finally coming out with a response, he's gonna be able to take a stock, but he's still sitting at 107%. He's gotta figure out a better way to get in on John in this. Okay, good spacey coming out from Frozen, doing those retreating back airs and forward airs, just apply shield pressure, force numbers to pick an option. That overhead just shields it right back at him. Neutral air, the combo starts, begins. I think neutral air seems to be one of the better tools for Frozen to use in this situation, just because even if he's not able to link it into a combo, he is able to drag numbers around with it, and mispositioning Inkling, it seems to be super important, and this is a clean chain of attacks from Frozen. That was a great sequence oh, of events. Oh, it ended just, so tragically. Just to end like that? Oh, no. We'll see if Frozen can pick up the slack here. I mean, he just needs one up smash away. Four down smash. The down smash is kind of, kind of bad, kind of bad, kind of bad, I'll stick. Well, I mean, I've never seen him use it, so he's looking for something. I mean, it covers a lot of options. Manages to go for roll to easily catch the opponent. Just goes for the simple back air, not to get that kill just yet, even though the crowd was cheering in the background. Forward tilt to push him back off. Free oh. punish, Hello? what? Frozen? All right, there we go. Explosive flame. It. And thankfully for Frozen, not a lot of percentage builds up during that time. 44%, it's not the best to sit in, but it could be worse. And this could be another reason why Frozen picked the stage. Allowed him to do that warp cancel on the edge of the Smashville platform right in the middle of the stage. Gives him some Are you oh, serious? no. Up Smash is going to end Frozen, you it. deserve that, dog. You were <laughs> Jake got so goofy at the end of it. I don't know. Maybe yes. it, Nerves might have played a factor, honestly. Like, like, he literally goes back and forth. Man. And he just, he whiffed it. He didn't, uh, when John went for the turnaround, he like out positioned himself so he just whiffed the neutral air. And John's like, okay, I'm gonna keep painting. <laughs> like that is like, that was definitely a game of Splatoon 2 on uh, when you're just trying to like paint the floors or whatever. And that's just like one player just going, oh, I'm just painting the floors. He just ran over it, dude, yeah. by accident. That's exactly what just happened. So John, taking out Frozen for third place. is gonna move on to grand finals to get the run back against Sinji again. You guys aren't sick of John Numbers vs. Sinji from 2015. Here it is again! Into the final match of the Go. evening. Grand Finals is between John Numbers vs. Sinji. And it is worth reminding folks at home that this is a best of three. So, if Sinji wants to run away with this, he just needs to take those two games. Yeah, but first to two, man. 
We'll see what happens. And, then, and remember that John Numbers has to win two sets. So if John Numbers yes. wins two games, he then has to win another two games to take home the entire tournament because Sinji has yet to lose a set this entire tournament. So he, he gets that little advantage because of that. Yo, this song's a jammer. I was just about to sing. This what is, is this? This is a bonus song in classic mode. You're running away from the darkness. John is a huge fan of this song, and I am too. It is a banger, dog. <laughs> Okada with the roller. Again, yeah. whenever you get set up like that by John, like when you just get uh, sent at that slight angle, it's actually better not to tech. Because if you're laying down on the ground and get hit by the roller, you don't get grounded. So you just get hit by the roller and it only does like 10 damage or something. And so, for those of you wondering why grounding is such a useful tool, it is worth reminding you that there has actually been a change to how grounding works. From previous iterations of Smash, grounding has only been getting better and better as far as the knockback reduction. Uh, when it was introduced in Brawl, it was a severe uh, limitation to where you're getting knocked back. And then they decreased that limitation in Smash 4, where it was about 50% knockback. In this game, there doesn't seem to be a reduction. You just take all that knockback, you get sent wherever you need to go. Yeah. And Inkling is a fine force for showcasing what you can do when you are able to ground someone so easily. Okay, numbers barely avoiding that bell. That would have been his death if he got caught by that. At this point, Pac-Man, Sinji's looking for a bell conversion, and John Numbers is looking for a splat roller conversion. So they're both looking for their kill, it confirms. He's both at that prime percent. He just caught him jumping up there with the up air and a Tanta boost. Yeah, unlike uh, Pac-Man, Inkling does have a uh, kill aerial that you can very easily throw out. Up air is a phenomenal move. Whereas Sinji's got to put in a bit more work in order to end out his uh, opponents. The key is going to be doing it for him. We're Caught back him. to square one. Caught him air dodging into the stage. And numbers coming back, throwing out that splat bomb against the hydrant. Curious how the splat bomb sends the inkling, the uh, hydrant the opposite way. It's trying. I think what happens is if you get hit by the splat bomb, I think it wants to bring you into the inkling so that you can get combos off of it. I think that, I think that's the intended purpose of it. Yeah, sometimes it sends the way that it's facing, other times not. I think it's just based on, like, the hitbox. It might be how long you cook the splat bomb, too. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see how that develops, because I have a feeling that, like, when you know where your opponent's going afterwards, sending the, out the splat bomb to send someone back to you, leading into something else, is going to look amazing. Okay, now sinji has got that key ready to go. It's going to be a fast throw. Tries to throw it against the Hydrant as well to create two obstacles for numbers to dance around. They're painting the ink a bit, throwing the splat bomb the wrong way. Key plus Hydra taking on a hefty amount of damage against John. Key oh, fell into Blinky up smash. Sinji one stock away, taking away this game. And you know, as we discussed, it will be our first champion for Ultimate. So let's see who does manage to get the crown out of this. That, that, that dash tag is pretty safe on shield, to be honest. There's actually four hits instead of three for the previous game. So you got to hold it for one additional hit than normal. Okay, the bell is ready to go. Oh, he's going to opt to go for the key instead. Throw it against the Hydrant. Yeah, I think Sinji's realized that the combination of Hydrant and key just put out a fast enough series of hitboxes that it lets Sinji reset where his traps are going to be. Yeah, I mean, he did that in Smash 4, too. Like, he, a lot of the stuff that Sinji's doing, he's been inheriting for the past four years of gameplay, you know? Ooh, a pair through the Hydrant and Pac-Man. Good stuff. Okay, trying to up smash the hydrant just to get out of the out of the way. I like it. Good like, pressure from Sinji. Didn't follow up with the third swing of the jab combo. Opting to just go with the retreating forward air instead, just to safely get away from harm's path. Okay, rapid jab. He goes off super deep for that forward air because Inkling can afford to do that. She can go off super deep and then go for the super jump afterwards and get back to the stage safe and sound. But John is already sitting at 63 damage. Looking pretty bleak here. Oh, there we go. All right. Splat bomb onto the Hydrant. The Hydrant itself, I think, is what killed Sinji. Some combination thereof, but either way, we're coming down to the last stocks. And even though Numbers is at a pretty high percentage, all things considered, I think if he keeps up his base for constantly zone breaking, preventing Sinji the space that he needs in order to get through, I think he might actually be able to take this one out. But he's going to have to be a bit more careful with his approaches. I think he's taking a bit too much damage as he moves in. And numbers. Looking for that up smash. Gets the parry because he saw the hydrant coming. Still got caught by the active hitbox though. Forward to stuff it out. He uses jump. Good punish from John, recognizing it with the grab. The roller right. not gonna be able to get a kill off that, but a lot of damage instead. 
He is starting to control this stage. All the momentum is in John's Ooh. favor. Pushes him off. He has to go for the pack jump to get back. He is done for. Great aggression coming out from John Numbers. That was an amazing last stock played by John. And for those of you who are you know, more well known to seeing his more patient play that he was known for in Smash 4, this is something completely different. A new breed of John that honestly I'm hoping we get to see a lot more of. He saw an opening and he took it all the way. Pushed him completely to the edge of the blast zone, forcing Sinji to like lose his double jump and then have to respond with just his up B from that far away. So game two, John Numbers up one to zero. One game away from resetting the bracket. Will we see it today? John Numbers did end up getting second place at the gauntlet number one last night. The Deadly Alliance ended up hosting a next level. So let's see if he'll get second place again or if he's gonna turn the tides against Sinji's Pac-Man. Oh, they switched the music to Meta Crystal. This is actually one of my favorite Smash tracks. Yeah, this is when you fight Metal Mario in uh, Smash 64 yep. in the classic mode. I love 64. There's actually a lot of aspects of Ultimate that remind me more of 64 than other iterations. Some of the sound effects, like, I know 64 has very iconic sound effects, but I remember, like, in the beta build at E3, they sounded very similar. Or, like, like or they made me think of them anyway. So, like, they're definitely playing homage to, like, all the Smash games, like, offering music from all five games. All right, here we go. Sinji's setting up the Hydrant as per usual. Again, the matchup's going to be centered kind of around that Hydrant. Who can get control of it first? Forward air catches the roll. You cannot roll against Inkling. That is just begging to get burrowed. Like, finding yourself in the ground is such a terrible thing to do against Inkling, but Inklings can hunt for it so easily, especially if you keep your pressure game up like John is doing. Catches the land again, forward smash. I feel like O smash might have Up been smash a better option. Been but regardless, catches Yo. the. I mean, there's nothing that Sinji could have done. He just he caught him completely. He had to go at that exact angle to yeah. even attempt to grab the ledge. So Numbers just planted a splat bomb, awaiting him. Like, Numbers is playing phenomenally right now. He's doing a great job of just catching where Sinji wants to move, preventing that measure, or just being right in his face. And now he's got the key on board. Yeah, I think he just tried to go for the air dodge just to like avoid it, but he ended up catching it in the process. Uses the splat bomb to force Sinji to go back onto the stage. Oh, accidental air dodge. Thankfully, he saved his double jump so he can get back to the stage safe and sound with that super jump. His upbeat. You saw that splat roller come out. That was a good option from Sinji. Going for the neutral air out of shield to just stuff out that option. Good night. Oh, okay. Gets the bell. He was stunned there for a hot minute. Easy. Easy pickings for inking. Easy Inkly. Inking. Inky. What's his name? Inky versus Inkling? Like, <laughs> that's what's going on here. I'm pretty sure that I once named Inky. Maybe? Call me out if I'm wrong. Like, I I, I think it's Inky. Eh, Google can help. It's, it's one of those. It's definitely not Clyde. Clyde's orange. Clyde's the orange one. Yeah. And Pinky's pink. Blinky's blue, I think. Wait, no. I think Blinky's red. Blinky's red and Inky is blue. Shut up. Oh, my God. <laughs> Since he's gonna watch this back and he's gonna be like double he's gonna disappointed. Be so mad, yeah. He's like, Austin's distracted and he doesn't know my ghosts. Yeah, 100%, and... dude. Yeah, 96% on Sinji. <laughs> <laughs> I just had to go on a rant there. All right, throwing down that hydrant. John's still playing nice. He's still throwing a lot of bombs. It seems like Side B travels a little bit further, or at least is more like. It's going to snap to the legends here. I don't know. I think Sinji's aim is just really good with it because he keeps on coming to the ledge with it. And we've only seen John have one effective punish on it once. You know, we actually haven't seen Sinji throw out the melon too often. I mean, it moves really slow this time around. Yeah, given how strange. everyone moves a bit faster in this game, and Inkling themselves is also a very quick character, I feel like melon's not that strong right now. Give Sinji time to figure out some use for it. I'm sure he'll figure out like when's the right time to melon. The yeah, opening over the back throw. Back throw is the stronger kill throw, but he was on the other side of the stage. Spot bomb not able to get that kill just yet. Again, 190 percent just goes off, kicks the power pellet, kicks the Pac-Man, and he is gone. John Numbers right now is on route to bring us into true finals very quickly tonight. But Sinji still got some gas in the tank. Very quickly yeah. managing to equalize the stocks. Trying to get that fuel going, deal. We are going into another universe right now from that background noise. Numbers took a lot of damage there off stage. Got the key ready to go. Gonna have to respect it. 
jumps over the item this time around. Let's go, John. I just realized one thing that Sinji had done when he side beat into his Hydra. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> we saw John do that before, but he actually hit the Hydra in a way. Yeah, he burrowed Sinji from behind the Hydra with the splat roller. That's Again, hilarious. And that splat bomb out. Now Sinji is a completely different color at this point. Good stage spike coming at him. 159%. He is dead. And that should Good be, yeah. night. Bracket reset. Coming from your boy, John. It didn't take too long, too. John, I think, is starting to get a feel for playing aggro now, and it's kind of dangerous. He's definitely learned the matchup, because like that was a completely different uh, play style than we saw in the previous set over in Winner's Finals. John is adapting to the new Pac-Man. He's like, you know what? I'm just going to get in your face, not allow you to plan anything. We're going to go back to the stage striking process this time around. It looks like Pokemon Stadium 2 is where we ended up this time. Because we saw a final destination for both Game 1 and Game 2, that set. Yo, FD Garden of Hope? Environmental noises? John was one of the people I told to do that, so... <laughs> I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be shocked. It is part of the plan to see. And I want to hear my favorite jam, you know, environmental noises the, in Grand Finals. Yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. You just hear, like, those, uh... Oh, you're really good at that. <laughs> All right, here we go. Smashville. Yeah, a little change of pace here for uh, the stage striking. It ended up taking us here with that middle platform. Just let it go into place really quick, and you're solid. Look how look how Sinji took advantage of that yeah. platform, moving it from the opposite side. It's like I have moving platform for at least a second. Let me let me use it. <laughs> All right, that was cute. Okay, so th that was like synchronized uh, swan dance. <laughs> Numbers even went for a taunt there. <laughs> what is this, John? Is know, this? A lot of damage off of that forward air, Sinji. I see. But yeah, John is playing. Uh... The thing is, when John is having fun. That's when he plays his best, in my opinion. When he's in a good mood. Like, he's so cheeky with how he's going about everything right now. Like, the way that he's trying to take stage, the way that he's pressuring Sinji, like, how he's confirmed his kills, it's all very creative. Nothing very tried and true, it, but it's working, clearly. So, there's no reason for him to stop having fun, but I think Sinji wants to have a bit more fun in his own right. He's trying to win here. Yeah, John gonna throw that splat bomb Go across the stage. There we go, got that double jump going over the hydrant. What the? Oh, he did the thing where you fail to put down the hydrant, although oh, now, yeah, yeah. now it looks like Pac-Man like leapfrogs on the ground. Yeah, I was gonna hydrant. say, was he like, it, that was like an Animal Crossing uh, villager taunt, you know, <laughs> where he just pokes the ground with a stick. Very weird animation. It is, I, I still don't know why that game. Dude, this banjo goes ham. Yo, really, though? Like, I got scared when I saw that there was a new remix for the Animal Crossing theme, because it's actually one of my favorites of all time. Mm. And then, like, I hear this banjo, I'm like, oh, come on now. And then the banjo just goes in, and I'm like, all right. I'm running for five more years at Smashville. <laughs> and numbers following suit with that splat roller intact. The thing is, he's a little low on ink, but I, I think as long as he has enough ink to throw out a spy bomb, which he currently does, he doesn't mind. Yeah, that's always the target goal, because he can always just charge it for a little bit and get it back. And the moment he gets stage control or a stock, he's free to get himself more ink. Yeah, and that's exactly what he was going for. He had exact, he had the right amount of ink before he could go for that kill, because that forward air required no ink whatsoever. That was her kicks. No, she got that from uh, Crustacean, Sean. Crusty Sean. There you that's go. That's his name. There it is. You'll He's the one that sells shoes, right? I'm pretty sure yes, that's the one that does it, yeah. Okay, 146% on Inkling. Gets the roll. That, uh, not that good of a mash out coming out from Sinji, surprisingly. What if he was trying to mix up? He might have been trying to mix it up against numbers one to go for an aerial. There's also the chance that Sinji's still trying to figure out the best way to mash in this game because mash is a tiny bit different in Ultimate than how it was in Smash 4. Well, there's nothing different about the fire, the fire hydrant slamming you like that and ending stock. Yikes. Or tilt catches the recovery off of that up B. Spot bomb coming intact. Numbers getting back onto the stage. Safe and sound. See, so narrowly avoiding that Hydra, but now Sinji trying to carry him off with the forward airs. If he would have gotten that kill at like 33%, would have been ridiculous. 
Oh yeah, that would have been huge. Oh, and the Galaxian ship combos, opting to go for the power pellet to just get back to the stage while also putting out an active hitbox for John. Got to threaten with something. Sinji's been doing a much better job of occupying the space that John wants to move in, which, mind you, is difficult against such a mobile character like England, but he's managing very well, just remaining incredibly swift with where he sets himself up. Okay, we got the key. Like, if this is what the new age of John Numbers versus Sinji is going to be, I'm looking very forward to it. Like, at no point during the, the previous set of Grand Finals or this Game 1 have I gotten the feeling that either of these guys wants to go for the timeout. Like, they're playing that aggro, but they're playing it smart. Playing it very carefully as John Numbers opting to save his jump yet again. I mean, that's like the name of the game. Oh, Kills him with the Hydra off of the neutral air. Numbers just responds with the spawn and kill himself. That's the classic. We've been seeing that a lot today. Just people just spawning and immediately getting the kill. I mean, you gotta do something. You can't let someone get away with a lead like that. Oh, yeah. It's like, it was one thing when it was a two-stock game, and it was like, all right, he's got a stock lead. It's whatever. Mm. What are you supposed to do to someone that has a two-stock lead on you? That is a daunting task. Yeah. You can't even get close to something like that. You have to threaten right away. And both these players are at their final stocks of this uh, game number one in true finals. Goes for the grab a little bit too quick. Numbers gets the punish afterwards. Now what Sinji likes to do is to play, plant down the uh, hydrant and then go for the grab as the water pushes him forward to just kind of catch a lot of foes uh, off guard. But Numbers is, definitely knows that trick. Yeah, plus the timing on it's a little bit different, so as much as John knows what's up with that, Sinji also has to learn how to time that right again. Like, we've said this numerous times throughout just this set alone, and you know, throughout the evening, that like, as these players learn what their characters can do, as the, the metas begin, really, for their characters, there's so many cool tricks that everyone's gonna be able to come up with, but it's still the first week. That roller staying that out is there. still as funny as it was the first time I saw it. Like I'm, I don't know if it's just the fact that it's still burying or the fact that Inkling is just giving it their all while they're moving absolutely nowhere. All right, here we go. 112% to 43. Give me John's opportunity to try to get this edge guard. He's not getting the opportunity for it, though. It's not happening just yet, although we've seen John hunt around with up air. Up air, for what it's worth, is able to uh, catch pretty well. But back throw from Sinji's threatening kill. It's not going to manage it just yet, but he's doing a great job of racking up this damage. Hydrant setting up. It's a bit of an odd one, but numbers remains evasive. Okay, trying to avoid the water. And you know, mostly I brought. I, I made a big point about how both these guys are playing aggro and how they're doing such a good job of changing the game, but the last 30 seconds on the clock looks mighty familiar. Yeah, the thing is, it's going to be in Sinji's favor, so Numbers has to make big moves here and now. They're trying to get that roller. That shield is looking mighty small. Sinji's got to do something, either stay mobile or yes, turn around. Sinji is playing key boy. That's exactly what he's got to do. I mean, I don't blame him, dude. Doesn't even need it. that away. The thing is, John was playing hyper aggressive because he had to. So he was able to capitalize on that on the uh, the uh, not cautious of the aggression because there was only 10 seconds. He just had to throw out an active hitbox somewhere. And Sinji finally closes it off with a solid back air. We move into game two with uh, Sinji on tournament point. I was saying this earlier. Like New champion from either of these guys. Sean was looking the favor coming into this Grands as he reset Grand Finals with the 2-0 very quickly. However, he might be running out of steam. Like, we, we joke around about being Thursday boys, but it's already won. Like, yeah. These boys are boiling it down to, like, the last of their energy. And what follows may be the last game of the night. Either way, we're about to see it as we go into game two. Oh, what what a set. What a jam uh, to end the night on, man. We're here at New York City, a.k.a. New Donk City, coming at you live from Pauline. Me personally, I, I would I would have liked Foresight better for for New York, but... I like this song, though. Yeah, for, no, Foresight is the new New York, though. That's definitely new New York. Either way, we are here for it. Battlefield, once again, the pick for... Uh, 
numbers picking into this, yes. Yep. Hope you like this song for seven minutes, let's go. Uh, you know, I liked it when it came out. I still like this song. This song's a this song's a jam. It's cute, but it, it, I feel like it's a little overplayed. Oh, numbers is going way too hard with that roller. They're not sure where he was trying to go with that. He's got the bell in his hand. Now if John show chooses, he can hold on to that projectile and it prevents Sinji from being able to pull out one of his own, but instead he just landed the bell right on him, got some free damage off of that F smash. I, I always used to like bring up the, the fact that item play and knowing the counterplay of characters who spawn items is super important. But especially against Sinji, someone who's so like well attuned to using all these different bonus fruits and all their wacky ways and getting so much off of it. I feel like that still stands true here in Ultimate, especially with some uh, other new characters who spawn items. But some things never change. People just don't learn to hold on to that item and keep it away from Sinji. Ooh, just throws a splat bomb right at him against that Hydrant. Back here, great tech coming out from Sinji to get back onto the stage safe and sound. Trying to trade that, but Ooh, that, that was, was cute. Great bait coming out from uh, Numbers. You saw him throw the bell to keep Sinji distracted by it so he didn't even think about John just charging it and connecting that grab. He's got the bell. Throwing down the Hydrant. And the hitbox from the Yuppie actually managing to do its job for once. Oh, how about doing that job? There you go. All right, well, these stocks traded itself much more uh, quickly than anticipated. See him doing that forward tilt. I'm surprised with how much mileage uh, John has gotten out of that forward tilt. Like, it seems like such a safe spacing tool. I mean, it's great. Like you said, she just goes for that pistol whip, packs on a lot of damage afterwards. Now we got Pac-Man again playing with the bonus fruit yet again. Ooh! I just had to fart and Numbers went so deep for that. My God. He saw his opportunity and he took it. Numbers running away with a combo. And now we're looking on point to get ourselves into game three. The yeah. truest of true fun. Oh, yeah, yeah. Got that parry as well. Look out for that bell. You know, I could have sworn uh, Sinji had a... Uh... He grabbed him through the hydrant. Hello? Man. We got to spend the next few years getting used to the wild things what? that Sinji can do. The ever-loving crap. I, I guess. All right. Either way, like, Sinji's doing a good job of putting on the damage, but now it seems like he's struggling a bit to get the kill. And I feel like that's just because of a lot of the pressure that Numbers is forcing out. Sinji doesn't have as much time to get out the bell or as much time to... Oh, that's a bit unfortunate. All right, trying to go for that uh, rapid jab. Hang on right. to that platform, like, ledge for dear life. <laughs> I mean, Numbers doesn't have to approach. He's got the stock lead. Like, he doesn't need to play the game. Okay, trying to go for that super jump. Still just chipping away at it, but Sinji has not managed out the, the kill yet. Ooh. Down smash. All right, a bit of a gruesome one, but it finally nets the kill for Sinji. However, he ended up taking 57% of the process, so. It's a bit grim, but still very doable for Sinji to try and end out the night here. Oh, there goes the Galaxian shit, my man. Okay, Sinji is one stock away. Taking this away Off from Numbers, and we're having a Pac-Man win Zeno, the first Zeno Ultimate Tournament in New York City. What in the world? I honestly feel like it'd be very fitting for uh, for Inkling to manage it out. Oh, he challenged him. Not have to get the death yet. Sinji going great DI. Numbers go super deep to end the pack jump and steal that last stock away from Sinji, the final game of the night coming at you live. I wouldn't really call that deep when, like, you can't do anything about it. And you're just like, yeah, okay. Yeah, you just go. ran down there. <laughs> he just he, he's just like, he's like, it's like, okay, here we go. Here's it. Oh, there we go. I hit him. And, uh, I'm going to step on the and thing. Two, three, well, yeah. so, you're well, God. so deep, Lamau. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. All right. The truest of the truest true finals truly beginning on Smash Thank God, because it's almost 1.30. Like, I...
I have to I have to ride the but low double R. Have fun, back dog. To, then I have to drive. Ooh. I drove to the lure. You know who else is driving this Galaxian ship currently? I wish I had a Galaxian ship. That thing must have great mileage. <laughs> it's an 8-bit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, no, it's probably... Where do I put the gas? Nah, it's killing the Earth, bro. I guess. All right, here we go. See him throwing just constant barrage of bombs. And I guess he gets his charge back for free because since he's just kind of chilling backwards. Just do the key at him. Not letting him respect. You know, of all games for these guys to figure out how to play campy with their characters, I pray it's not this one. Not this point in the night, please. There yeah, we go. Yeah, it's the connection off of the bell. With almost no damage done to Sinji either. That was practically a free stock. Okay, was hoping, trying to apply some shield pressure, Sinji just goes for the uh, spawning of the Hydrant as an answer. I think now that John figured out how useful Splat Bomb is in this matchup, we're not going to see an end to the onslaught. And unfortunately, I think Sinji needs to figure out the counterplay quickly, or else Splat Bombs are just going to completely terrorize every time he builds up his mobile bastion. Ooh. I've been trying to get the follow up, just waits for him. It's hard to bait that air dodge. You only get one air dodge per, like, while you're in the air, and until you get hit, obviously, or you touch the home base. Your feet on the ground. I'm just gotta figure out something. This is getting to be a pretty brutal lead that uh, since he's building up. Already lapped in percentage with the stock lead that he has. And you know, honestly, one thing I, I brought this up the first time I saw it, but I'm really waiting to see if it has any applications. When you shield the, the hydrant and the water flies upwards, hysterical. Oh, yeah, yeah. If it actually sends a little bit upwards, though, I'll be very intrigued to see what happens with that in the future. There we go, forward air. Remember's trying to follow up. Goes for the back throw. Still not killing though. That was a great angle on the splat bomb. Like cooked just long enough. Again, trying to throw out these splat bombs. Said you're still sitting at that 135%. Not enough for numbers just cannot find his way to solidify this kill. I mean his Usual kill, his go to kill move is to burrow his opponent with the splat roller. Just goes off for a forward air instead, gets the tech on the wall so he doesn't take the trade of death as well. So he's still holding on to two stocks. Yeah, but one of those stocks is in really bad shape right now. Since he's done a great job of slowing the pace of the match down and just chipping the damage little by little onto numbers. Oh, try it again with the up smash. Inky coming out. <laughs> okay, gets the pack jump. See him throw that splat bomb, narrowly avoiding Sinji. Um, he is trying to apply up some pressure with that forward air. Look out for that melon. Melon's a pretty slow uh, projectile. I hope John has the speed and, uh, I guess, attentiveness to dodge it. You know, for what it's worth, actually, John is making a lot of these stocks last long. So if he's going to be taking this, uh, damage, he kind of needs to. Like, he's sitting at 154 and growing, and his first stock is a lot like this as well. They're trying to get back on the stage. Goes for the trade. The neutral area added the shield. Still sitting at 172%. Just Look throws the that. key. That was actually a really smart one as well because we saw the key bring down a good amount of the shield and then the fire hydrant poked it. Like, shield poking is a lot better of a, uh, of a method of pressuring your opponent overall just because, I mentioned this earlier, shields are pretty weak right now. Like, literally, as in they take a little bit less damage than what we're all used to, but also... Your out of shield options aren't as uh, potent. Shield grabbing is notably slow. Like, it's not a fun time to play in shield defensively speaking. Yeah, he just throws the hydrant right back at him with that forward smash. Now that's actually like a good uh, tool for Sinji to go for as well. Just go for the pack jump on top of the hydrant. Instead of flying, number saw an opening, ran in there with that forward air. Trying to get something going. 
That was a good use of the pack jump. Instead of waiting that time around, he's using it immediately to mix him up. He is going for the Yo, ultimate dude. with that Galaxian combo. He wanted it so badly. No pun intended. Oh, point blank splab. I'm not going to give him too much. He's sitting at way too high a percent. I don't know if Jundras can do this. If he manages to, it will be a beautiful sight to see. However, it's going to be a very difficult one as we clock into the last minute and a half of the smash. And this is the last one. Look at the deficit that John is sitting on right now. Not enough to get that kill with that Hydrant just yet. 135%. At this point, Sinji could play the runaway game. He, he just go for a timeout. Back throw will not get the kill just yet. And there's no reason for Sinji to stay grounded either for numbers to try to get that kill confirm off of Roller. We might see Inkling's weakness come into fruition. Takes a wow. trade. No one died. Right. What are they saying? I really cannot understand what they're saying. But they're really hype about something. Yeah, and it's less than a minute left. This is uh, looking pretty bleak for numbers. I, I, I don't know what he's going to do. He's not going to be able to do anything. He's Sinji... just going to get tossed away. And Sinji is going to be the first champion for Ultimate here yeah. at Xeno. With Pac-Man, my, my gosh. New there York he City, goes. New York City, we got some work to do. But here we go. <laughs> we learned nothing. No, but congratulations to Sinji from Deadly Alliance taking home first place finish at the first Ultimate Tournament for Xeno. Xeno 139. That's going to be it. Do we want to do interviews, Devin, or do we want to get uh, out of here? We should do it. It's the we first should, one. It is the we first one. It. We should do yeah. it. I